Well, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Vanguard Bandits. I'm Scala Kitty. I'm going to be your runner. I'm very happy to have the star and uh, Garby here with me this afternoon. Um, very quickly, though, for my lovely host, Liz, uh, for the incentive to watch the uh, opening movie, I can go back and do that after the run is over. So okay. feel free to keep that open for the entire run. Uh, the incentive for the extra dramatic final boss battle does have to be cut off at the start of that battle, which is at uh, roughly about, mo yeah, it's like right at the end of the game. And I'll let you know when we're coming up on that. Sure thing. All right, so are we just going straight into the game then? Yep, go ahead and count us down. All right, let me back up then, get to the actual title screen and not just the save screen. All right, shall we then? So let's go in three, two, one, go. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what this game is. Vanguard Bandits is a 1998 tactical uh, RPG that was put out by Human Entertainment. If you know them, uh, you probably know them for the Clock Tower series. It was localized and brought over to the US by Working Designs. If you know them, you probably know them for the Lunar series. Um, it's got like a sort of a standard kind of a fantasy RPG story. You know, there's torn kingdoms, there's war going on, uh, but it also includes giant mecha, because why not? Uh, so we're just going to go right into the story. We are playing uh, as Bastion. Bastion is our shonen anime protagonist. Uh, he's going to be assisted in this battle uh, by his uh, very nicely mustachioed uh, anime dad, uh, Kamorje. And uh, we'll just get right on into it. We have to do the uh, most important time save in the run, which is turn off battle animations. Uh, one of the big sort of selling points of the game is that every single, like, fight sequence can feature uh, a cutaway to 3D animated models of all the mechs having, like, much more like intense in anime-like battles. Uh, that takes a lot of time, so we are not doing that. Yeah, um, it's like a There's some interesting tactics in this game. Uh, for example, uh, Bastion will be able, well, all of our characters will be able to counterattack on their turns so long as they are attacked from the front or from the side. Uh, we are going to be using that a lot. Uh, basically, there probably won't be an attack in this game that we don't uh, try to counter, uh, unless it's like a very low chance to hit attack or we're trying to defend uh, just to be on the safe side. Uh, we're joined in this fight by Reyna and Ione, uh, two really cool lady mecha pilots. Um, but everyone in this fight is uh, AI controlled except for Bastion, uh, who we have control over. That's fine. This actually works in our favor. Uh, this mission is really uh, tightly routed. Uh, so that way we can make sure that Bastion gets a bunch of uh, EXP. Uh, EXP in this game, um, we, it's uh, 500 EXP for every uh, level in this game. So there's a pretty set um, uh, guidepost basically for leveling up. Um, as you might notice, we have a pretty long name for the category, which is Any% percent Empire Route Sicilia Ending. Uh, this is because we will be doing the Empire route of the game. There are three uh, story routes in this game, which is actually pretty impressive. Um, the default route is called the Kingdom route. Also get our first level up. Yeah. And uh, to reach the Empire route, which is sort of the second route of the game, you have to have Bastion at level eight by the time you reach the end of the third mission. And uh, as you see there, when I leveled up Bastion, I have complete control over uh, stat growth in this game, uh, which we are going to uh, use to maximum efficiency. Uh, we are going to be throwing uh, a lot of points um, into very specific stats. I have a whole stat sheet in front of me uh, to make sure that I keep track of where all the stats go over the course of the run. So we're going to do two more points into power, and we're going to do one point into agility on this one. And I am actually done entering uh, commands for this fight. The uh, AIs are going to take care of everything else. 
And uh, I'll talk a little bit about the route I'm using. Uh, this route was developed by previous world record holder uh, Earek, otherwise known as uh, Faulkner. Uh, there is some risk to it, but it's all pretty manageable with safety saves. Uh, current world record is held by John Elfico. Uh, that route is a lot riskier. Uh, it sort of relies a lot on having uh, several like coin flips kind of go your way. Uh, so that's why I kind of stick to the slightly safer route. Uh, I'll, I'll do my best to kind of also keep you all updated on the lore as we go, because I will be mashing through this text as fast as possible. Um, so we have now uh, made friends with uh, Reyna and Ione. Uh, they are working for uh, Avalon, which is another one of the countries uh, here in this game. And uh, they are friends with this gentleman named Galvis, who uh, Carmerge is apparently also friends with, so we're going to go and try to uh, meet up with them. Meanwhile, in the land of minor key music, so that's how you know they're the bad guys, uh, we have the Jinaris Empire. Uh, we have our, uh, the Princess Sidira here talking to General Faulkner. Sidira is actually a perfectly nice person. Uh, Faulkner, though, uh, he gives off those uh, intense bad guy vibes, and we will get back to him uh, later. Also, one very quick thing I'm going to note, uh, this game is rated T for teen. There will be a couple instances of slightly harsher language in this run. Uh, but again, I am going to be skipping over all of that as fast as possible. But I like the uh, story in this game. There are a couple of actual like entertaining lines and actually like some poignant lines too. Uh, along with like some jokes that uh, if you were very familiar with working designs in like 2000, you probably know what kind of jokes there are. Uh, my sort of uh, way of explaining it is that for Vanguard Bandits, uh, there are two wolves inside Vanguard Bandits. One wolf really, really wanted to do a serious political drama a la Final Fantasy Tactics. The other wolf wanted to make fart jokes and you don't know which wolf you're going to get at any particular time. So we are getting ready for our second mission. Uh, before we do that, we do have to very quickly hop on down to the equipment menu. Uh, we actually won't be changing equipment too much in this game, uh, but we've now equipped uh, Bastion with an opal. So um, you only have three slots for equipment in this game. You have a weapon, you have a stone, and you have an amulet. Um, weapon obviously just is your whatever your main weapon is. Uh, stone's pretty interesting. It sort of is the magic system in this game. Uh, there are all sorts of different uh, spells you can learn, and you learn them as you uh, grow your stats. Uh, we're ignoring all of them in favor of fireball. <laughs> uh, this whole run revolves around the fireball spell. So that is what we're going to be using for pretty much the entire run uh, for some characters. Um, and I'll uh, sort of explain about how uh, attacks work really quickly. So uh, when you're doing attacks in, or just any kind of action on your turn in Vanguard Bandits, uh, you have uh, two points uh, systems that it's drawn from. You have what are called action points and fatigue points. Um, so doing something like walking around costs just action points, no fatigue points. Doing any sort of attack will cost a combination of both action points and fatigue points. With action points, you start with 100 at the beginning of every uh, turn, and then you expend them as you do stuff like walking or attacking. And then on the flip side, uh, fatigue points, those uh, start at zero and then will go up uh, over the course of your turns. And they will slowly reset, but the more actions you take, the more likely you are to get fatigued. As soon as fatigue hits 100, you are put into a status effect called fatigue. Uh, when that status is in effect, you will be absolutely unable to do anything for an entire turn. Uh, that means you cannot dodge, that means you cannot defend, you, you cannot move, you are basically stuck there. Um, but this uh, status effect works both ways. Uh, so we can put enemies into fatigue just as we can be fatigued. So over the course of the run, we're going to be trying, um, especially with uh, harder hitting characters, uh, to uh, fatigue them uh, as a way to sort of safely combat them. 
So we're into the second mission. Uh, again, we're still trying to keep up with our experience routing. Uh, this mission usually goes well. It can, we can have issues sometimes with the AI uh, kind of ignoring the way I try to bait them. We'll have to see if they feel like playing ball or not. If we don't get uh, Vash in the experience he needs by the end of the mission, it's not anything that is a total reset of the run, but it will make uh, mission three harder. All right, so we're going to have Reyna come on down here, and we are going to try to actively bait Bandit one. Hey, and he decided to uh, take the bait today. Sometimes uh, he doesn't. Sometimes he just stays up there on the cliff and decides to go after Franco, uh, who's currently fatigued. You can see that little star floating around. Uh, we'll get uh, talk more about uh, Franco and fatiguing uh, later, because it's definitely going to come up. So we got our first level for this mission. That is excellent. We're going to throw all of that into power. And uh, sort of at the other end of here, we have uh, Steer, Halleck, and Franco. They're just going to kind of do whatever they want to do. They're probably going to take out uh, all of the orange mechs on that side of the battlefield. We're going to try and make it so that way Bastion takes out the two red mechs. And while we're still talking kind of about experience routing, um, experience in this game, like I said, it's, there, there are some parts of it that make total perfect sense. There are other parts of it that are absolute witchcraft. And I try my best to make it make as much sense as it can, but even sometimes I will just be like, I don't know what's happening here. All right, we're gonna leave that bandit fatigued. Yes, right there is where we need to be. One of the other nice things about uh, fatiguing is that it means that we can use uh, lesser attacks, like I won't be using a, a fireball. I'll probably just be using a, uh, a uh, just like a simple like thrust attack. Because when they're fatigued, uh, attacks also hit harder. So we got one more bandit here. Unfortunately, uh, Reyna just happened to be taken out by his attack. That's just sort of part and parcel with this uh, strategy. All right, let's see. Usually this bandit tries to hit Ione. Nope. Decided to go after Barlow today. Um, the actual sort of story thing is that uh, Devlin and Barlow down there in the gold mechs uh, were, were being accosted by these bandits. I'm just going to move my Ione over here just in case I need her to help out with cleanup. Uh, but they don't do anything in this mission. They will just stand there and turtle up their defenses. Uh, so we can't actually count on them to do anything. That's fine, then. They kind of act as bait. Let's see. How is Franco doing? No, nope, Franco is not doing as well as he could. Let's usually... Yeah, Carmarche's trying to go up there. That's fine. That's sort of standard. Hey, we got the level up, though. That's what actually matters here. So this is good. This is exactly where we want Bastion to be. We're gonna see, hopefully we can maybe get the kill there. If we do, great. If we don't, that's fine too. I'll probably just have Ione go in for cleanup. Nope, never mind. Sadira has decided that she wants cleanup. This is a little annoying. This does mean we're slightly off money route. I'm just gonna have Ione, no, hello. Not do anything. Uh, I might have Bastion though climb up the, uh, the hill there and uh, Help out there. Oh, did you have something? You can feel free to stop me at any time if you have any donations, anything you want to talk about. I am more than happy well, to let you all cut in. Sure. I have some donations <laughs> I can cut in with. Oh, just got a pretty that big one. Fantastic. Oh, I'm so excited. We got $200 from Ground Flyer. <gasps> oh, Ground Flyer! Thank you oh, for Ground doing this. The Malala Fund <laughs> is an amazing cause, and I'm so happy to see it headlined on GDQ. Girls all over the world need access to a good education. P.S. Scala Kitty is awesome. Give me the extra dramatic final boss battle. Ground Flyer is a, is a, is a dear community friend um, who is exceptionally wonderful and generous. Uh, I am beyond uh, happy to uh, see him out here um, supporting the Malala Fund. When uh, we announced the charity, I was over the moon that we get to support something that is doing so much good around the world for uh, girls who really, really need it. Yeah. Yes. Um, 
So um, we are now sort of after the battle, we're having a big dramatic conversation with Sidira, uh, Franco, and Halleck, uh, all about like the different uh, horrors of war and how it's terrible for everybody. It's just a lot of serious time. There, there's a lot of times in this game where people will just be just, just really upset with everything, and it's totally understandable. So we're just going to make our way through. Uh, we have now uh, basically adopted uh, Barlow and Devlin. Uh, they are now in our party uh, for one mission. <laughs> also, here's Andrew. Uh, we're not going to be uh, having Andrew in our party. Uh, we'll catch up with Andrew later. We are also going to master his dialogue as soon as it comes up. Because Andrew a Andrew uh, wasn't informed with the fact that this is a PG uh, stream. Anyway, back in uh, the Junaris Empire, uh, this here is uh, Dwyer. Dwyer is Sidira's older brother. He is the heir to the Empire. Uh, he's also kind of a brat. Yeah, he's totally a brat. And uh, he wants to go and uh, put on his, like, neck and uh, go around with the big stompy boots and fight people. So we'll be seeing him next mission. So we're just going to scoot our way along into the next mission. And also in the next mission, we're going to explain how we safety save in this game. So, oh, yes. It's like I hear the mic and my ears all perk up. <laughs> so anyway, um, so this is a mission that kind of happens in two parts. Oh, also, so it just happened there. Uh, apologies if there are any audio glitches. Sometimes if you menu or mash really fast in this game, uh, the audio can't quite keep up with you. So that will probably happen a couple of times. As I said, we have sort of two halves to this mission. We have the first half uh, here on this side of the bridge where we're dealing with uh, Dwyer and his bodyguards. And then the other half of the mission, uh, Carmoge is sort of holding the bridge and taking out these Imperials one by one. Uh, we are not at all worried what's happening down there. What's going to happen down there is going to happen. Ooh, do not end that turn. We need to actually do this turn. Uh, so, spoiler alert, uh, Dwyer and Bodyguard 1 are going to exit this fight uh, partway through. So we are just ignoring them completely. Uh, normally in this game, uh, enemies that have uh, unique names and portraits are worth more experience. Uh, not so for Dwyer. <laughs> Dwyer is not worth any like valuable experience, so we are just going to ignore him and instead sort of uh, focus on all these other bodyguards as they come up here. Uh, bodyguard number two, oh, did you miss Ione? I think she missed. Yeah, she missed. Unfortunately, that's what can happen in this game. I will 100% have times when I uh, have like a 99% chance to hit and my characters will still miss. It's just the way RNG works in this game. Uh, that's why even with how uh, nice you can plan out this game, there is always going to be a level of improvisation in every single run you do. But luckily, nice. Do you have to watch Bastion though? His FP is really high. So we're gonna hope that uh, he kind of gets ignored. There we go. And uh, we don't mind what happens to uh, any of the characters in this uh, fight other than Bastion. Uh, because we will, spoiler alert, uh, be losing access to all of them after the end of this mission. Because these are all characters on the Kingdom route where we uh, go and not the Kingdom route. Uh, I did play Kingdom route when I played this game originally. I played this game when it came out in 2000. Uh, because I would actually, let me move. Marina down here. There we go. Marina, please. Let's see. Also, you'll see me kind of hop around behind people. Uh, attacks from the 
behind uh, tend to do more damage, and uh, you can't get counterattack, so it's usually the safer way to do things. That's good. We fatigued that character, though, so we're good. You are bodyguard four. You are fine to fight. So we are going to go right up now, and boom. Nice. And there is the level we've been looking for. So we're going to do two points into dexterity and one point into power for that last level. And we're just going to slowly start moving towards the bridge as we do this. But yeah, uh, I played this game back when it came out in 2000 because I was in high school. I loved watching Toonami. I also really loved tactical RPGs and I found this game at GameStop and was like, there's a cool mech on it. And they, and I watched like the little like trailer they had going and I was like super duper excited. Uh, and then I played the entire Kingdom Route. Uh, spoilers, Kingdom Route has good ending and bad ending. Guess what? It's really easy to get if you're playing this game casually. The bad ending. Aww. So uh, when I was looking for a game to learn, I actually been wanting to learn this one for a while because um, like a lot of people who run retro games, uh, I wanted to run it for a combination of uh, nostalgia and revenge. <laughs> so it's very satisfying now to uh, beat this game in about two and a half hours, three hours, depending upon how things go. All right, so I'm probably just going to move up. Just take out this bodyguard, because I want Bastion to get as much... Yeah, of course, then you weren't worth any experience. Whatever, whatever. I'm going to just leave. I'm just going to start walking up here to the bridge. We'll let characters back here kind of take care of it. Hey, Barlow, can you do... No. Barlow, just, just, just go to the bridge. We'll have Rita take care of it. There's going to be a lot of me just being disappointed in characters. Hey, Rena, can you just take care of this guy for me real fast? Good job. Go, go you, Rena. I'm proud of you. You got a level. Yeah, we don't care. We're just going to throw that onto the first state uh, stat there, uh, base stats. Is it time? All right, so when I say extra dramatic final boss battle, this is what I'm talking about. This, these are the battle animations uh, that we turn off. Oh. Uh, this, one, this, this one, though, is, is extra super duper dramatic. Uh, because it is the, the death of uh, Carmorge. Uh, Faulkner uh, has, uh, has, has killed him. These are um, so. These are really cool, but I see why they aren't in the speed run. Yeah, they're really cool, but they're not in the speed run uh, for a reason. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make ourselves yeah right about there. Uh, we have to take care of these last two Imperials. Uh, they're going to take a, a few turns to get their way across the bridge. So while we're waiting on them, we're just going to make ourselves a nice little. Uh, box here to kind of trap them in. All right, cool. So they are now uh, trapped in this box. We're going to just take them out as fast as we can. Yeah, this guy tends to get hung up. But yes, if you would like to donate for the extra dramatic final boss battle, uh, we will have even more of uh, those type of attacks. Come on, come on, buddy. We are all very speedy. This guy is not. Hello, hello. All right, let's very quickly just take this guy. We're just going to trap him. We do actually have some donations for that, Ooh. mind if I... Uh, give me good. Okay, I just want to make sure that I got that one text box correct. Uh, that is the text box that sends us to the Empire out. So we're good now. Go right ahead. <laughs> All right. Um, Five dollars from Tech 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 Tech. Hello, Yay! Scholar Kitty. I am so happy that you're running Vanguard Bandits. It's one of the most unknown and underappreciated round-based RPGs. So I hope that your run can give a boost to our very much sleeping community. Thank you. 
My donation uh, goes towards the final cutscene, which has some of the funniest voice acting I've ever seen in any game. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, that's for the Kingdom Route uh, final cutscene, so we oh. don't get to do it. Don't worry. I will. I will do some dramatic reading though, if we do get the dramatic. Uh, <laughs> I, I like doing the dramatic uh, reading at the end of there. Uh, so we have chased after uh, Faulkner. We have exactly uh, one thing to do in this mission, which is to walk right up to Faulkner uh, and just uh, throw a fireball at him. Let's see if we hit him or not. Ooh, we hit him. Ooh, that's good. Um, it's a total coin flip if we hit Faulkner or not. Uh, if we do, we get an extra, like, 250 experience. Sometimes you can actually level up on this mission. Hey! Ooh, this is real fantastic. We are now ahead of the game. That is beautiful. That is exactly what we'd like to see. Yay! So that's going to set us up for Bastion being really strong going forward. Uh, did you have any other uh, donations? Um, sure. We have a $25 anonymous donation with no comment. Thank you so much. Oh, so I, 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 there's a question in chat. Can the different, yes, can the different routes be explained? Uh, can you speak up just a little bit? It's a, I, I don't quite hear you in my headset. Oh, can, can the different routes be explained? Like, what are the differences between the various routes that oh, you can take? Sorry, Garby, you're breaking up it's, for me. Uh, what are the differences between the various routes? Can you explain them? Sure, absolutely. So uh, there are three routes in Vanguard Bandits, uh, Kingdom Route, Empire Route, and Ruin Route. Um, Kingdom Route is your default route uh, where uh, Bastion will join forces with uh, the Ferastia Kingdom and its empire and its uh, allies to fight against the Empire. Uh, empire route, which is what we're on right now, is sort of the secondary route of the game, where instead uh, Bastion will sort of be, uh, what's the best term? Forcibly recruited <laughs> to, to work for uh, Princess Sidira uh, and her uh, advisors, which we're getting introduced to right now. So we have Franco uh, in the blue jacket there, and then we have uh, Halak, she's in the purple dress. And uh, Sidira wants to investigate the corruption within the Empire, uh, probably being led by Faulkner. Uh, so it's going to be uh, this little team. Uh, but we've got one more member to introduce, and I always like to read her first line out. So, hello, Princess. Hello, Halak. Hello, Franco. And hello, green-haired boy I've never seen before. This is Cecilia. She is uh, a ninja-made mecha pilot. I want you to, like, parse all that out together. She is a ninja. She is a maid. She is a mecha pilot. And chat, she is now our waifu for the rest of this run. Um, as you can see, uh, this is called the Cecilia ending route. Uh, this means that it is our job to make Cecilia very happy and to somehow, by the way of just being real cool in battle, get her to uh, fall in love with Bastion. Uh, the reason why we're doing this is because Cecilia's um, ending is the easier of the two uh, endings for the Empire route. Uh, so now we have uh, joined forces with the Empire, but we got to do something very important. We got to actually go shopping. Uh, we have very limited uh, opportunities to shop. I am going to sell that and sell that. All right, so let's get buying. So we need to buy one and two. We're going to go down by our strength gauntlets. One, two, three, and four. And then we should have enough. We need to buy one Jasper. Ugh, we just ended up under. It's, it's, there's nothing we can't recover from. We'll just have to sell something afterwards, but we'll have to go in very quickly. Nope, we need to go over to equipment. Hello! This can just happen sometimes. Um, what we'll do is I will equip everyone I basically can, and then... Uh, okay, cool. We're just going to back out real quick. Just sell those two radius swords. Alright, weapons. Oh, no, no, no! I have to buy the thing! All right, we need to buy that last... Nope, opal. Cool. All 
All right, then. A little annoying to have that happen, but again, nothing we can't um, correct for. So we need an opal, need that strength gauntlet, and Cecilia, get your last opal. Awesome. Also, I realized I did not safety save on mission three. That's okay, we're gonna safety save on mission five because we pretty much need to. All right, cool. We're now on the officially on the Empire route. We have our new party. Uh, we started with five members. Uh, what this means is that the game will never throw too much at us at any one time because we only have five party members. Uh, because of that, this means that the um, Empire route battles tend to be a little easier. Uh, Kingdom route, uh, you get a lot more characters in your party, so those battles tend to be bigger. Um, whoops, need her to go one step forward. Oh, yes, hey, let's actually safety save before we do anything. This is how you safety save in this game. You can save in the middle of battle. It's actually better to do that, as long as you're sure that all your menuing is correct. Uh, just because it means that I don't have to sit through, like, the opening cutscenes uh, again. So that little opening dialogue we had uh, was revealed that uh, these are a bunch of uh, Empire Separatists. And uh, we are going to bring them to justice? I, I don't know quite the justification here. Anyway. Uh, finally, uh, Ruin Route. Uh, Ruin Route is basically a New Game Plus route. You have to have a completed uh, Kingdom Route file on your game in order to unlock it. Uh, it kind of comes in about halfway through the Kingdom Route. Uh, the game will split off uh, into the Ruin Route. It's actually really hard because uh, it's basically has expected you to have played like the rest of the game before you get to Ruin Route. Um, there is uh, at least one run done of the Kingdom Route on the um, leaderboard, but pretty much every most people uh, run uh, Empire Route. And when I say most people, I mean like there's like me and like four other people who run this game. <laughs> uh, and as far as I know, I'm pretty sure uh, I am the only uh, female runner of this game, uh, which is fine. I don't mind that at all. I'm glad to, you know, kind of bring it out, uh, let more people uh, see it. Uh, if you find yourself at all interested in this game, I am more than happy to share notes and resources. Uh, so what we're doing here is uh, we need to get rid of everyone uh, but the, uh, the officer in purple. Once we kill the officer in purple, it's going to set off the second wave of enemies. So we're going to be kind of taking out everyone else first. Uh, we really want um, Sidira and Cecilia in particular to get levels in this battle. Um, it shouldn't be too hard for Sidira. She's really strong. Oh, Franco. That's going to happen a lot to Franco, where Franco will get fatigued. It's fine. He can usually tank a few hits. Uh, let's have Halak kind of go over this away. Uh, I've also have put um, opals on everyone to. Let's see. Good job, Cecilia. This usually, yeah, she'll get a level pretty quickly uh, if we just sort of let her get kills. And there is Sidira's first level up. We are throwing all of that into power uh, for her for the time being. Let's see. Since Bastion's ahead of the game, I'm going to have him help uh, out with cleanup on other people. All right, we'll trap that Imperial in just a second. Uh, there we go. Nicely cleaned up for everybody. We do have this little trick we can do where if we have um, action points uh, at the end of a turn, we can't have characters move back and let other ones move in. Uh, did she get hit? I'm going to check her info real quick. She did get hit. That's okay. Uh, so one of the big parts of the uh, Cecilia route is that we have to make sure that Cecilia pretty much never gets knocked out in battle. Hey, we'll give that level to Franco. Just gonna make sure that Cecilia gets her level by the end. Uh, 
Um, and I'll explain how like the the game will actually pick uh, which ending we uh, we land on. So this game has a morale system. Uh, it comes into play in both this route and the kingdom route. Uh, with the kingdom route, uh, you, which ending you get, whether it's the good ending or the bad ending, will be based off of your party's uh, total morale, uh, sort of averaged out. For uh, for this ending, uh, uh, that happens sometimes where you can move in too much and then just not have any action points for attacking. Let's see. Anyway, um, so for this route, uh, the game's going to look at the morale of both uh, Cecilia and uh, Sidira. And uh, by the end of the game, judge whichever one has the uh, higher um, morale. And that's going to be whose ending we're going to get. Oh, no, I shouldn't have done that. Cause, yeah. Oh, no, hey, that's not what I expected. I will take it. <laughs> I was expecting them to attack uh, Cecilia. So I left her um, uh, uh, her open to a rear attack. That is OK. Um, here, you can't really help out any other way. Go down here and uh, help out with this. Good job, Franco. You're probably going to get, yep. There's actually a lot of this sort of thing where we do this little sort of dance with each other. Franco is fatigued again. No one is surprised. Um. Uh, let's see. That's an agility level. Okay. We're good on Bastion's levels. We can have him get a uh, power level. That'd be fantastic. Good job. There we go. There's Cecilia's level. That's what we're looking for. Uh, we had to give her get one level so that way she's able to use the fireball spell. All right. All right, we're going to have Bashin just take out the Bandit Chief. He might get a lo another level. <laughs> Heck yeah. This is very good. We're moving into a very... Wow, he got a double level. Unexpected, but I will take it. <laughs> this, is, this is really fantastic. This means that Bashin is way ahead of the game. Uh, which is great. We're going to see if we can have other people get kills for the rest of this fight. Alright. Halak, go help out Franco. She's probably going to also get fatigued after this. Yeah. Uh, Cecilia can't come in to help, unfortunately. We'll just have her move down there. Uh, actually, here, Bastion, don't worry about it. Uh, let's see her coming around the edge. This is just a little annoying. We kind of got stuck here with this one guy hanging out down here in the corner. It happens. But. Again, that's just enemy AI being enemy AI. All right. Boop. So we did have a little time loss there, mainly because of the, the shopping stuff. But. In terms of levels and experience, we're in nice shape. So, there's a question in chat. Is there? A, it, why do we spam fireballs as opposed, as opposed to other moves? Uh, so the reason why we use fireballs is because they scale really well over the course of the entire game. Uh, also, by having a uh, fireball uh, and fire spell related uh, stones on, it does raise our base power, which is great because that makes uh, that all of our attacks will be stronger than they would be normally. Uh, also, it has a very uh, manageable uh, fatigue point and action point cost uh, compared to other spells. Oh, cool. So it's just a super duper useful spell that works really well over the course of the entire game. Uh, so that's why we basically sort of put all of our money on Fireball. <laughs> uh, so we've got this mission here. Uh, this is another mission where we're going to have uh, multiple waves uh, we come upon uh, some troops of the Ferocity Kingdom, and they're out here, like, harassing this village, and uh, Bastion's big mad about it. Uh, 
And then they realize that, hey, the princess is here, so uh, we're th they're, they're ready to rumble. We are also going to take a safety save here. Just because the first turns of this mission can be a little coin flippy. Um, we should be fine, though, because Bastion is definitely ahead on where he needs to be level-wise. Let's... Fingers crossed, though. There we go. That is exactly what we want to see happen. Um, that um, sort of enemy commander is really dangerous if we let him uh, live. So taking him out on the first turn basically assures that the rest of this mission is going to go really smoothly. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to sort of divide up... I've got to make sure Cecilia is going where she needs to be. Um, the rest of the enemies here. Uh, so Bastion and Cecilia will stay in the middle. Halleck is going to go towards uh, sort of the eastern side. And uh, Sidira and Franco are going to stay here on the... Wait, no, they're on the east. Halleck's going to the west. Camera changes. All right. So we're going to walk right up to this other guy in green. Halleck is going to go... I found that putting her right here is the best. Cecilia is going to come up along. We're going to have uh, Cecilia try to do cleanup duty if she can. We want her to get uh, another... Ah, uh, dang. That, that was me. I should have had Halleck uh, counterattack. That's nothing we can't recover from, though. It just means that this mission might just be, like, a smidge longer. Uh, worst comes to worst, after we've cleaned out everything else, I can send... Uh, Cecilia or Bastion to go help her out. So, not nothing too, and it's just that's just an annoying mistake. Yeah, usually we're going to have Cecilia defend. Oh yeah, we're talking about morale. A uh, big thing with morale is we don't want Cecilia to ever get knocked out in a fight. Uh, getting knocked out is a big hit to her morale. Uh, we can come back from it. It's just really annoying to have to. Uh, basically, what we'd have to do is there is this sort of um, system in the game called interviews. Uh, but because of the exact context uh, for this route, uh, I always refer to it as safety flirting. So uh, if she ever gets knocked out, we will have to just take a bit to... Ah, uh, jeez, oh, Bastion. You missed on that uh, fireball. No, leave Cecilia alone. Good. She, she dodged. Good good job, Cecilia. I'm having Sidira just come up here to kind of get ready for later. Franco can take out this guy by himself. Really? Really, Franco? Left him with one... <laughs> don't, get, don't get a level up for that, Franco. You left him with one HP. Did leave him fatigued, so that's good. There'll be a lot of me being sassy with the characters. Hey, level up for Halak. Halak sort of ends up being a lot of a uh, cleanup character as we kind of go on. Uh, she's got really good movement, uh, but like Franco, she doesn't have anything super duper special about her. Let's see. There we go. Good job. Good job, Bastion. You got there. Enjoy your level. Uh, where are we at with Bastion's levels? All right, we are at a dexterity level. Making sure I'm double checking my notes. Yes, we're at a dexterity level. I'm just going to kind of protect Cecilia a little bit. Hey, Cecilia, can you get behind him? You can. Uh, okay. Nah. Okay, good. She got her level. We're going to try and have her just sort of sit out if she can. Uh, we go to put two points into defense and then we're throwing everything back into power. Cecilia's just pretty squishy, so we're kind of uh, taking that, those few points in uh, defense just to help her with her squishiness. All right, Franco. You know what, Franco? Just, just, just kick him. <laughs> kick is um, the absolute weakest attack in this game. Uh, so it's sometimes funny to actually get a kill uh, with uh, what I've nicknamed kick strats. All right, Halika has one more enemy down here. 
but she's gonna be fine. All right, we are going to take out that guy. We have one more enemy to face on this map. And usually we just have actually here. Bastion, you can get in on this, can't you? Yeah. We'll have Bastion get in on this. Cecilia's just going to hang out in the back. She won't be able to walk over there fast enough to actually um, contribute, so we're just going to have her sit out. Yeah, unfortunately for, for Cecilia, at the start of the game, she is kind of the person who lags behind the most. All right, Sadira, this is your last power level for a bit. All right. Come on, Halak. Almost there. Uh, 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 uh. Come on, let me counterattack. Hey. All right. Lost a little time there because we just had some misses, but we got through there fairly nicely. Got some levels. Like I said, Bastion is like way ahead of where he needs to be. Uh, we do have to be a little careful in the next mission because sometimes Bastion being ahead can make the surprisingly can make the next mission um, actually harder. <laughs> anyway, Bastion uh, pretty depressed, but he has some nice. Uh, uh, advice, which is uh, every moment you spend looking back is a moment you could spend looking forward. We also have one of my favorite lines for Sadira. She gets uh, real emotional uh, watching uh, Bastion here. You know, his his face lighted by the lamplight, talking so tenderly about his uh, deceased father. And she's get she's getting feelings, something fierce. Uh, but she tries to uh, shrug it all off. And she has one of my favorite lines of the whole game, which is like, it's like, I've seen cuter boys than Bastion. I just can't remember their names. So to to my to my lovely host and commentator, uh, if you know some 90s anime boys who are cuter than Bastion, please feel free to share with the class. Uh, 90s, cute 90s anime boys. I mean, in the 90s, I pretty much just watched Tenchi Muyo, and there's a shortage of boys in that. That is uh, fair. Although, is Grandpa... Uh, when, <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa, when he's younger, can get it. <laughs> uh, uh, I definitely... Uh, I watched a lot of uh, Sailor Moon. So, uh, shout-outs to Kunsite slash Malachite, as well mm -hmm. as to, uh, to Zoysite. Tuxedo like, Mask. I was never, like, the Tuxedo really? Mask person. Mm. I just wasn't. Well, here's the thing, though. Um... For those of you who, who might not know me, I'm also in the uh, Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise community, uh, where it's my job to make all the, the Z sprites, all like the final boss sprites. Uh, this is because I I am like a very sweet, soft marshmallow of a person, but I love a well-written villain. <laughs> I'm like, uh, so I always like tend to like enjoy like villain story arcs. <laughs> so that's why I will be like, yeah, Tuxedo Mask, meh, but like, like Prince Diamond, mm-hmm. But also like, you can go to like, say, like anybody in Gundam Wing. <laughs> uh, Vaughn from Escaflote. Uh, we nicknamed this game the last time I ran it, uh, Esca Clone, <laughs> because of how many tropes it shares. All right. Uh, now I have to make sure, and I'm going to remind myself, I'm going to probably have the opportunity to hit Ganlon before he's ready to attack me. I need to, I need to tamp down that desire, because <laughs> otherwise we are going to be off. Oh, I went to show one little thing. I have to wait till we get our uh, control back. I can't do anything while these guys are stomping around. I just have to wait through it. Uh, so we can't win this fight, actually. Uh, so I'm going to show you what the actual mission objective is. The mission objective is just to rage around. Because <laughs> we can't win. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Uh, so our actual objective is we want to take out uh, Ganlon and one kingdom soldier just for bonus XP. I am, see, I knew it. 
now Ganlon's gonna get his turn. All right, and we're going to, nope, fire, no, we're going to fireball. There we go. All right, I'm going to let these guys beat up on Bastion. Uh, I'm actually going to put defend. You're going to be like, Scala, why are you putting defend instead of avoid? Like, avoid gets higher, like hit, yeah, but defend. Well, uh, no, no, defend, defend. Sorry, I don't usually defend that much. There we go. Uh, this will now put me into fatigue state. I'm going to hope that these guys do their job and knock Bastion out as fast as possible. The only thing, like I said, this is the only problem with Bastion being strong ahead of time is that he can totally end up so strong that these guys can't kill him very fast. <laughs> and it's just, like, very annoying to kind of get stuck with that. Oh. So, and unfortunately, the longer this goes on, the more stompy boots we have to deal with. So if you have donations, this is actually a good time to throw in donations because I'm just waiting for them to knock out Bastion. Sure thing. I do I do want to note before donations that we do have incentives up. We have multiple incentives today that we need to get met. Uh, for the end of this run, we have the intro cutscene that we can watch and the final battle animations. Both of those are about 500 away, so if you're looking for something to donate, that's pretty big. And the other, the biggest one today that we really need to push for is the Oblivion bonus game. That will be at the end of this day. Uh, we're currently 750 out of 5,000. I definitely know we can get there. Um, and also, if you're looking for, uh, for an extra something, if you're like, you know what? I want to donate to charity because I'm a good person, but I'm not that good. I want something out <laughs> of it. There are shirts that we have on the Yeti. Go check out our shirts. It's a really awesome, uh, it's a really awesome picture of our mascot, Faith, uh, made by LLK, um, as well as a one that you can have with your shoulder showing if you want to look like that. If you want to look awesome, yeah. Go check those out. Shout, shout out to LOK. For sure. That art, th that art is so good. I love Faith's design. She's so cute. Uh, anyway, so uh, Bastion got in trouble. Uh, Sidira got him out of trouble. Uh, we have one of my favorite lines where uh, Faulkner kind of explains uh, to Thompson here, this uh, grumpy guy in orange, uh, who Bastion Bastion is, and he's just like, uh, he's some boy that uh, Princess Tadira has taken a very hormonally driven interest in. <laughs> uh, turns out, though, uh, Thompson uh, is uh, revealing that uh, Bastion is actually the lost prince of the Ferocia kingdom. Who is surprised? I think exactly none of us. Um, unfortunately, uh, Bastion does not take this news very well, because he realizes that this means that um, his, who he thought was his dad, Carmoget, was actually not his dad, uh, was actually uh, his sort of like knight guardian. Uh, his actual like father, the king, passed away like 15 years ago. Uh, he is, the, basically his birth was responsible for like the last like 15 years of war on the continent. So uh, he's, he's pretty like, you know, depressed about all of this. Um, at the end of the scene, uh, Cecilia tries to uh, slap some sense into him, uh, reminds him uh, to keep uh, looking forward, and uh, I, I do like though that she does like apologize for slapping him. She's like, I just want you to understand that other people have it tough too, but you can do this. You're strong enough, kind of thing. And maybe you need like someone who is strong enough to kind of point you in the right direction. So that's kind of where we're at with the story. We have to go back uh, that fort. We kind of didn't talk about the actual story thing. Um, we had Ganlon there with like the twirly mustache um, and Zakov, who also has a twirly mustache. And they are twirly traitorous mustache bros. And we're trying to make a secret alliance to um, to backstab the kingdom. And that's what got Bastion so mad. Uh, now we have to actually do this fight, like properly. Uh, I am gonna take a safety save here. And we're gonna hope that we get some levels on uh, Sidira. 
Uh, we want her to get at least one, like hopefully one or two levels if we can, uh, if we can have things go our way. So I have to wait though. Uh, these guys are going to fight each other. So we're going to have a little like AI kerfluffle for a bit. It's nice for me. I get a chance to rest my hands. <laughs> Get a drink, get hydrated. There we go. Uh, usually the uh, the kingdom uh, troops, they'll probably win out. Uh, sometimes the empire troops can maybe knock out like one or two. But what happens in this fight, I have zero control over. Uh, you can see we have a pretty decent number of enemies here. Um, but the good thing is that they will all be at pretty, uh, they, none of them will be at max HP. So that is a little helpful. Also, there's Ganlon in his weird, like, pterodactyl mech. I don't know what's going on there. Oh, safety save time. I have to wait till it's actually one of my character's turns. There we go. Uh, so we're going to have Sadira make good use of her movement, go all the way down the bridge here. Sort of make our way across. Uh, did you have anything else? Sure. We have I, I, I hear I hear the mic. I hear like the mic noises. And that's why I'm like, oh. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I was moving the mic. No. Because I You're I fine. Off. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Feel better, Liz. <laughs> there we go. I don't want to do it in your ear. <laughs> I, much appreciated. But please go ahead. If you have more stuff, I'm just going to basically I'll, I'll sort of go over the things. Um, we're just going to be sort of cleaning up this whole uh, battlefield here, just sort of one enemy at a time. That's a lot uh, of people. It's a lot of people. Like I said, um, the guys in red, though, are, are Empire troops. Uh, they're our allies in this fight. Um, and none of the Kingdom troops will be at full HP. You see, like, that guy there has only, like, three HP. Um, it's a little annoying. Um, Let's see. Oh, that's surprising. Sometimes, actually, I'm going to have her use just a regular thrust. Uh, she. Oh, good. She got her level. Beautiful. That's one level I want her to get right now. Um, anyway, we're just going to be kind of cleaning everything up here. Uh, so, um, if you had some donations, go, please. I, I'm so happy that people are coming out, uh, contributing to our wonderful charity. And uh, just having a good afternoon with some with some PS1 games. Indeed. We are raising money for the Malala Fund. Uh, all donations go towards the Malala Fund. Um, we're actually getting really close to uh, 25,000, which is awesome. <sighs> that is half of our goal for the entire week. Oh my god, that's amazing. Which we're really, really doing great. Thank you, everyone, for your very generous donations. Uh, I will read one here. We have $5 from Jim Jam 114. Oblivion is one of my favorite runs of all time, and I could, and I spent more time on it than I'd like to admit. Seeing it being run would be amazing. Could we get a $5 donation train going? Yes. Donation train, donation, donation train. Donation train. Choo choo. Choo choo. As someone who's running a train game later this week, trains. I like them. Trains. Trains. Tell me about your train game. Uh, oh, have you never seen Super Locomotive? I have not. I am now like super invested in, no in learning more. I would like to subscribe to your newsletter, Liz. <laughs> please press, press, press. Oh God, please don't to unsubscribe from Train Facts. <laughs> Actually, one, one of my partners is like super into trains, and they do that kind of thing. I'm just like, hey, Bisk, can you tell me about trains? And they just go on. But yeah, my, my train game is a uh, obscure, my favorite arcade game ever made. And awesome. uh, only 35 copies of it were made. And okay. Unshockingly, it is a Sega game. <laughs> that, all of this sounds like so like on Liz Star brand. I'm <laughs> loving it. Yeah. <laughs> I, and uh, according to everyone, it is like extremely difficult and I make it look very easy. I'm the second place score world record holder in that game. That's amazing. I'm going for world record. So that's my run is going to be a score attempt. Uh, I am super duper excited <laughs> for you. I hope I hope you like it. Nothing, nothing it, but trains. 
Nothing but trains. When is that? So the good people and myself also know. That is. Let's see here. I've got to pull up the schedule to see how much it's moved. Super locomotive. Where have you gone? Oh, bye, Franco. Oh, yeah. It is at 10.43 <laughs> Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday. Awesome. Uh, we don't mind if uh, if uh, Franco wipes here. Uh, unfortunately, we kind of, like, oh, no. that. that's just going to happen. Uh, unfortunately, we got what we don't want to have happen. Uh, so you see, like, down there, uh, I'm going to leave this guy here for Sadira. Uh, so you see down there at the end of this uh, bridge, uh, there's Zakhoff in, like, the, the blue mech. Um, he will not contribute at all to this fight. He's just going to stand there and people are going to want to hit him. Uh, I don't blame them at all because uh, I also would like to hit him. <laughs> and he's just standing there. Um, we have to deal with him later on in the run and it's annoying. But, okay, cool. So having uh, an enemy kind of end up on that end of the bridge is just like, oh no, now I have to go and chase that those enemies down. Uh, so we don't mind if Franco kind of baits them to stick around. All right, come on, Sadira. I need you to get this kill for me. Let's see. I think those green guys are worth a little bit more. Yeah. Beautiful. Let's see. We should be throwing everything into dexterity now for uh, Sadira. Uh, this is going to be very important for the next few battles. Um, let's see if Halleck can move in close enough to hit and then walk back. Uh, no, she can't. Oh, that's annoying. Uh, Sil, you're probably done for this. Probably have Bastion come in and help. Oh, hey, that's actually great. Please make my job easier. All right. So we lost a little bit of time because of that bridge, but this this is not this is like a two and a half hour long game. So we are doing pretty well. Uh, so anyway, after that whole, like, big debacle with, like, people being traitorous and trying to cut, like, secret deals and everything, we're like, you know what we're going to do? Let's do some diplomacy and also kind of cut secret deals. Don't, don't worry about it. So we're going to go on a road trip to uh, be diplomatic. Uh, big thing I have to remember is uh, this is a shopping trip. So we are now in the country of Nordelaine, uh, which is run here uh, by Duke Logan, uh, who just wears like a giant tiger cape. It's okay, it's fashionable. Um, and he's joined alongside with his uh, advisor, Xion, and his daughter, Claire. Uh, he's totally cool to be like diplomacy buddies with us, uh, but we have to prove ourselves upon the field of battle. So we're going to have a, uh, a throwdown. Um, the nice thing about this fight is uh, we can lose it and the story will just keep going on. Uh, but uh, it's actually in our favor to take the time to win. All right, I have to make sure I do my shopping. This is an important shopping trip. So we already sold those gradiuses earlier, so we should be okay on money. So we need to buy one, two dark blades. Need to buy one ruby, one dexterity ring, and one, two, three. Whew! <laughs> Fun's two hundred dollars. <laughs> that got real close. But we're okay. So Bastion's gonna get that dark blade. Gonna get that ruby. Going to get that power tiara. Sidira's gonna get a dexterity ring. So power tiara, Jasper. Dark Blade, and then Halleck gets the Parishes and a Power Tiara, and Cecilia gets a Parishes. There we go. There we go. That's how we want the shopping to go. All right. So our our big sort of goal for this mission is we want uh, Sidira to get the lion's share of the experience here. Uh, this is to set her up for a whole bunch of things we need her to do throughout the rest of this run. 
Oh, I, didn't move. I was waiting for like are more people going to move, but I could have a drink. I was not safe. Uh, actually, actually, I'm going to have Halleck go to this side of the map. Uh, where Halleck goes kind of just depends on how Cecilia has been doing. Uh, Cecilia's lagging a little behind where I'd like her. So I'm going to have uh, Halleck uh, join her on that side of the map uh, just as a safety. The one nice thing with uh, Cecilia is... Um, we don't need her to start really hitting um, stat thresholds until later on in the game. Uh, unlike with Sidira, where this is where we need to put a bunch of work into her. Uh, so she's going to fight here with Claire. Uh, usually Xion will kind of come in and we're going to answer him back. There we go. That's a level. So we want Sidira to be at Dexterity uh, 16. Uh, sorry. Yeah, 16 by the end of this fight. And if she can get one extra level to also get some points in uh, power, that would be amazing. Oh, sorry. Points in agility. Points in agility. Also, kick strats. Uh, Franco's going to go up here and help out with Claire. All right, Halak. Uh, okay, Halak's gonna get like the first hit on this guy, and then we're gonna see if we can have uh, Cecilia clean up after. Cecilia, not quite able to re make it. That's fine. All right, Claire usually doesn't do anything. We're going to have Sadira knock her out because she's worth a lot of DXP. All right, we're just gonna have not do anything. Uh, no. Yeah, alone, I shouldn't have done that. Okay, Whew. good job, Cecilia. Good job dodging. Logan uh, won't do anything until, like, just about the end of this fight. Oh, uh, we're going to fireball. Let's see. Um, I'm going to actually end here and let Sidira take out Xion. This is just me being on the safe side, because Bastion is super duper ahead. Like, Bastion is like way ahead of where he needs to be, so we are... There we go, that. Ooh, she got the double level! Oh, that is amazing. That is perfect. Okay. All right, let's have Cecilia kind of get in here, fight this guy. There we go, she's got a level. All right, cool. Uh, Franco's gonna go up here. Uh, we're gonna lose Franco. Uh, F for Franco. Oh, oh F. <laughs> F for Franco. There's gonna be a lot of F for Franco. Uh, we're just gonna have Halak take out this guy to move us along. We're just... Because we had some time loss in the last few missions, I'm just doing this to move us along. I don't mind if uh, Halak gets a level. Yay, Halak! You can see how... Uh, <laughs> How incredibly biased our stack growth has been. All right. No, Bastion, you're just going to stay down here. We are going to have Sadira move in over here. Sadira now uh, has her ultimate attack. Uh, you'll notice that this is uh, mission uh, nine out of 20. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Usually we can... Oh, boy. Uh, does defend... I'm going to have her defend just to be on the safe side. Hey, he still missed. All right, we're going to do one last thing. Spiral dive. All right, this is great. We're going to throw that onto power. Boop. All right. So we are in a real good situation with uh, Bastion and Sidira. Uh, Cecilia's uh, a little bit behind where we'd like her to be, but Hopefully we'll be able to have her catch up a bit. Uh, anyway, uh, Claire has now joined our party. She is now our Valley Girl Talking Sixth Ranger. Uh, we actually like Claire. Claire um, comes with um, a pretty strong uh, mech, as well as access to, um, with a little bit of leveling, the uh, the flare bomb spell. 
uh, which we'll get to that in just a second. Anyway, uh, we now are going to uh, Hibernia, uh, which we're trying to, again, do diplomacy. Uh, turns out this is actually a, a bad idea because Claire is blocked to IRL in Hibernia, and uh, they're really, really mad that she's here with us. So, also we get this cool, like, snowfield music we only get uh, in the Hibernia fights. Uh, by the way, Devlin and Barlow are back. Uh, surprise, turns out they're actually from Hibernia. Um, everyone is, like, really upset and just yelling at each other across this giant snowfield. Uh, and you might think, wow, that's a lot of guys! Uh, we are not fighting any of these guys. <laughs> Uh, they just won't do anything uh, until we attack them. Uh, sorry for... I, yeah, there is that audio glitch for me menuing too fast. So I just kind of have to wait for Sadira's uh, turns to come up. So she's just going to march her way all the way across the battlefield. And uh, everyone else is just going to kind of chill over here. There we go. And what we're going to do is the only person we actually have to fight is Devlin. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> and uh, by positioning ourselves here, uh, when Devlin's turn comes up, he's going to try to attack Sadira. We are going to counterattack with a spiral dive. And he's done. That's it. Oh, wow. That's... That's actually cool. I've never had her get like a bonus level up here. Nice. That's fantastic, actually. All right. So we're done with that fight. Um, and that's it. That's all we had to do. Uh, so we're gonna meet Duke Alden. Uh, I actually like Alden a lot. He's very cool, uh, literally, because he's all like wolf and blizzard themed because everyone in this game has to have like a brand. And like it like your effects like your mech, your spells if you like have like a cool face portrait. Uh anyway, um, so we we're like, hey, do you want to be diplomatic with us? And he's like, no. And we're like, oh, okay then. Uh Devlin kind of calls out Bastion for now working with the Empire. Uh turns out uh, Alden knows though that Bastion is the prince. I like the you make a choice, step onto the path of your destiny. That like sounds like super duper cool and meaningful, but like I'm the kind of person who, like, a friend would try to ask, like, what should, what topic should I put on my pizza? And I'd be like, you must step onto the path of your destiny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we have this little scene here uh, with Cecilia. Uh, she's going to reveal that um, Bastion's kind of figured out that uh, Cecilia's, there's more going on there than what she's saying. I have to kind of pay attention here. That she's working for someone else. Uh, who we do not know, but we promise that we're not going to tell anyone. Um, we actually have this really, like, sort of soft scene with Cecilia where she's like, yeah, I'm a mercenary, and you know what? That means a lot of, like, lying and covering up, and I don't want to do that anymore. I really would like to have an honest life and sort of leave this whole mercenary business behind. And I want someone to know who the real me is, Fashion. I want that someone to be you, and I actually really like that. Um, I find it kind of interesting, like, I think between the two sort of, uh, dateable, datables and very big quotation marks here, uh, I definitely think Cecilia's story has, uh, it's, it's definitely a little bit more complicated and it definitely has some interesting, uh, nuance to it that I kind of like more so than, uh, Sidira. But that's, that's just me. Uh, anyway. Uh, Thompson uh, comes up with the idea that uh, since uh, Bastion is uh, the prince of the Ferrasia kingdom, that means that he has royal blood inside of him, and he should be able to revive the ultimate mech, the Ultra Gunner. Spoiler alert, there are no guns on the Ultra Gunner. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's called the uh, Uraragna in the original Japanese. It, the name doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, so we are now going to... Uh, try to make our way to uh, talk to uh, the Marquis de Leon, 
uh, who holds uh, the mystical stone, the Gratia, which will allow us to awaken the Ultra Gunner from its centuries-long slumber. It's, it's a big thing. Uh, anyway, but all along the way, uh, hey, this is finally Galvas. We finally ran into him. Uh, and then uh, he and Thompson get into a big, like, shouting match. Like, have you ever been at, like, a family function and, like, two people, like, start having, like, a really, like, awkward argument? Like, it could be over, like, something, like, completely, like, useless. Like, how best to cook a steak or, like, the proper rules of bridge. And it just makes it, like, awkward for, like, everybody. And you're just like, Uncle Tony, like... It... Auntie Meg, Is can it... we all just, like... Like just like agreed to to be friends. Is this is this like do you know this from experience? Did, <laughs> did you actually have an Uncle Tony and Aunt Meg? Oh. <laughs> um, um, the, the closest thing I, I've had to this is um, uh, at my last like sort of family gathering. Um, uh, it's my 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 sister in law's grandpa was trying to teach my brother how to play oh what was it? Oh cribbage. And they got into like a big like rule like lawyering discussion. But anyway, uh the long story short is oh also I need to save after this. Hey, I should have saved earlier. <laughs> that is such an old person thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but it, it it don't worry, it's okay. He has a license, he's like eighty. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, I am going to safety save right here and now because this, this is the battle that is most likely to go off the rails. All right. Uh, that's because Galvis, Galvis hits hard. Uh, and we already had uh, Sidira do one spiral dive on him and Bastion do one fireball. Unfortunately, this means that Bastion now is at a, about half HP for the rest of this fight. Uh, so that's scary. Uh, I should probably explain now. Uh, if Bastion is ever knocked out, we lose the mission. Like, we game over. Oh. Yeah, so we actually have to watch Bastion's HP. Uh, hey, Franco got a level. Where is that level going for you, Franco? That is an agility level for Franco. So we, in this uh, fight, there's just a lot of uh, enemies and they move in fairly quickly. All right, so we have to wait and see what Galvis is going to do. Galvis sort of has a bit of a coin flip as to who he decides to attack. He's either going to go after Franco or Cecilia. Franco is our preferred target because Franco could actually like tank the hit better. Um, if uh, it ends up being Cecilia, this means that, uh, oh, hey, that's actually nice. Where are you gonna go? Yay, he went after Franco. Oh, he actually went after Halak. That's different. He's never gone after Halak before. I, I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, we definitely want uh, Claire to come in and get some hits on him. Come on, Claire. Come on, Claire. Yeah, that's ex oof, that's good. Oof. Uh, because killing him is worth an entire level. Uh, this is mainly to get Claire kind of up to speed with everyone else. So we are actually in pretty good shape now. Uh, we need to, like I said, get rid of Galvis as fast as possible, because if we don't, he is just going to cause us a bunch of trouble. So also make some notes about where we're doing stuff with Claire. Um, uh, one HP. I hate it when like enemies get left with like one HP. That's the most annoying thing. They won't like do much at that level, but they're still just annoying and they're taking up turns and they're making my life harder. They're, they, are, they are just annoying me personally and I don't like it. All right. That's another Cecilia level. Okay. But uh, basically we're trying to sort of make this, uh, yeah, go away, buddy. We're trying to sort of keep this wall here, just so that way we can't really get back attacked. This was, we did a agility level, I had to double check, dexterity level. And we're just sort of not going to be moving a lot unless we have to. All right. I am going to have Cecilia just defend uh, for this fight. Again, I don't want her getting knocked out. 
like I said, not the end of the world if, uh, or not like a run killer if Cecilia ever gets knocked out, but we then have to do some flirting to keep her happy. Can I uh, slide in here with some donations? Oh, please go right ahead. I'm going to be focusing and trying to make my way through this. So go right ahead with some donations. Sure thing. So, uh, hi, this is Frank Fatales. We're raising money for the Malala Fund. We are 290 away from 25,000. I'm sure we can get there by the end of this run. I want to get a push. So when you donate to the Malala Fund, you can uh, put your donation towards an incentive. A lot of people have been not putting them towards incentives. Our big incentive today is the bonus Oblivion game. There are some calls for a $5 train uh, so if you have, if you, if you have just $5 laying around, there are, th this is an incredible cause to put them towards. Choo choo. Choo choo. choo. Here's, here's one, uh, by Claire61. $5. Ah, oblivion. Good times. Exploring ruins, talking to people, making morally gray choices. Huh? What do you mean I've been playing it for five hours? Well, this time I'll actually see the ending. Let's keep this $5 train rolling. Aw, uh, thank y'all. Thank you. All right. Um, so uh, you might have missed one thing that I definitely will kind of point out. Uh, like I said, Sadira really ahead of where we need her to be. Uh, let's see if I put her right here. Um, this basically means that Spiral Dive now basically one-shots uh, characters. And we're going to be using that to maximum effectiveness over the course of this run. Yeah, go ahead, beat up on Franco. Again, F for Franco. <laughs> F for Franco. F for Franco. That's that's fine. Like, if, if anyone is going to be knocked out, we're happy that it's Franco or Halak. Ooh. Ooh, this is super cool. So, uh, Bastion, like I said, has been ahead this whole run. Uh, we have just unlocked double attack on Bastion. Oh, uh, so he can now do two attacks uh, per round, so long that as he has the uh, action points for it. So that is really fantastic. Also, we only have one guy left. Uh, I'm just going to do that for swag. All right. That went really... Oh, that was a gold split. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh, nice. Great job. Yes. So... Uh, anyway, uh, Thompson, though, uh, he is not going to survive. Uh, you know this because they're, we're playing the music box version of the main theme song. <laughs> F's for Frank. <laughs> F's for... <laughs> F's for Thompson. For Thompson? <laughs> yes, I for Thompson. I called him Franco. I'm just so used to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, we're moving uh, into the... I, what's the name of like a place that the marquee rules? I don't know. Oh. There's like a special name for it, and I cannot remember what well, it is. Google, Google remembers what it is. <laughs> Google, help us, please. Uh, anyway, uh, but we're on our way to talk to the Marquis uh, uh, de Leon, uh, and it's Andrew. Hi, Andrew. So we now have the deal with Andrew, uh, who is putting us to the, the test. And basically saying that we have to uh, make our way uh, through this battle before the Marquis will uh, talk to us. Do you want to know what Google says? What does Google say? A Marquis is the French name for a nobleman whose rank was equivalent to a German Margrave. What is a Margrave? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it's um, uh, specifically they rule over boundaries. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Between countries. Okay, so like, um, oh, the part of France that everyone fought over, that would probably be, like, ruled over by a marquee. Uh, this is where it's like, I, 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 I have a degree in history, but my, my focus was American history. <laughs> So it's been a while since I've been European history. I'm, I'm sure someone uh, will will correct me, and it will be fine. Anyway, uh, so we just got a bunch of uh, mercenaries here to fight. Um, usually, just yeah, they just ignore Sidira, 
which is great. I'm like, please ignore her. Uh, she's going to be marching over this away uh, to do this. Again, she now has basically the power to delete people. <laughs> there we go. That just brings out the other two enemies for this fight. We're strong enough that we can take on like all these guys at once. I do have to make sure that I remember that Bastion got a uh, double attack early. I have to remember this. Because I'm not used to him having it this early in the game. Uh, which is a great position to be in, all things considered. Uh, he can't do anything else this turn anyway. That's fine. Uh, so we're just going to be uh, sort of making our way through this fight. Hey, Franco. Good, good job, Franco. Let's see. This is an agility level. Uh, we tend to... I, we're pretty, like, balanced with Franco's uh, stack growth. Uh, there's some characters where it's just like... We are going to be throwing stuff in very particular directions. Oh, wow, this is... I we'll we'll just have Claire go up this way. We do have to deal with Andrew uh, by the end of this mission. I don't like dealing with Andrew, like, at all. Uh, let's see, we should be able... Yeah. Um, so Andrew's there in that sort of green mech, uh, I forget, like, the actual name, but all the mechs in this game actually have very specific names. Uh, but I always forget the name of his. It has, like, uh, I can't remember what it's called. But anyway, it, it's the Spinny Ninja mech. Uh, you will see why it's called that, uh, as soon as he moves. Alright, oh, why, ooh, oh, no, 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 no. We are having her defend. Yeah, some characters can tank, tank hits. Uh, Cecilia, not quite yet. Hey, level for Claire. Nice. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can have um, Cecilia do cleanup duty where possible. Oh, this we're just going to avoid. Normally, I'd have her uh, counterattack, but she's so close to fatigue, I don't want to risk it. All right. Uh, I, I should let that. No, go right ahead, please. please. Can I swoosh right in with a. Uh, oh, sure. Swoosh all that you like. Oh, I would love to. Continuing our $5 train $5 from Tigerbot Hesh. Vanguard Bandits is one of my favorite games of all time. So awesome to see it being run at GDQ. Ultra Gunner for life. Heck yes. I am. Uh, I'm so happy. To, oh, I actually could. Yeah, I should have taken him out. No, that's fine. Yeah, we're just, All right. Yep, yeah, she's going to be fatigued. That's fine. Hey, level though. Where's she at? Okay, we're throwing everything into base right now. Okay, good. All right, Cecilia, where can we have you go? Either one of these fights will work. Let's see how much, there we go. That's what we wanted for Cecilia. Uh, that's, so we're throwing everything into dexterity for her now. All right. So she's done with power, we're on dexterity levels. I will happily take another level for Claire. Okay. All right. We now have to go over this way and start fighting these two nerds. And if you ever have like more donations, please just just just. Sure. Especially especially ones from the um, uh, the Vanguard Bandits community. I am super duper happy. There are people out there who who love this game. And who are happy to see it. There are, and there are people donating. Oh, uh, talking about how, how much they love it. $10. Oh, that's makes me happy. <laughs> $10 from Munchie AZ. So excited to see Van Vanguard Bandits. This game is near and dear to my heart. My first SRPG experience and one of my fondest gaming memories. Shout Aww. out to my brother, Kyle, who shares the same feelings about this treasure of a game. Aww, shout out. Uh, I'll, I'll, I will give a shout out. I meant to give this shout out earlier. Uh, shout outs to, to uh, my wonderful girlfriend who sort of puts up with all my uh, speedrunning shenanigans. Uh, <laughs> just, 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 just not their bag, which is totally fine and understandable. Um, 
but they always make sure to wish me well. And uh, I was told to uh, to do the thing and to do it with uh, style today. So shout out to Orin. Yay. All right. Yay. All right. We are through that mission. Hey, that was another gold split, surprising. Oh, nice. Slowly, world slowly making... Coming. <laughs> world, world record is actually legit hard to get in this game. World record is sub two hours. Ooh. Oh. And like I said, uh, the the world record route is very risky compared to what I'm oh. doing. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah uh, then there's no, like, safety saving or anything in it. And uh, basically, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about, about the difference. The world record route revolves around the flare bomb spell that Claire has. We basically get it on both uh, Franco and Halak as well. Flare bomb is really interesting spell. Um, it has a low chance to hit, but when it does hit, it is like extremely powerful. So it just, the whole run becomes like a whole sort of like, do am I going to get this flare bomb to hit? Yes or no? Uh. Uh, anyway, uh, we have now uh, met with the um, Marquis uh, de Leon. Uh, and uh, guess what we're doing? We have to do another rumble with people. Uh, this is going to be a little different. We're doing a 1v1 fight. So there's only ever going to be uh, one of my characters and one of the enemy's characters uh, in this fight at any one time. We are going to go right on into it. 1v1 me, scrub. That literally, literally the name of, of, of this uh, split uh, is fight me 1v1. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm definitely someone who likes um, silly split names. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to start out with uh, Claire. And there we go. Uh, so uh, basically the way this uh, sort of throwdown is going to work is uh, we want to... Um, so there's an actual order as for the participants. Uh, so Claire goes first. We're going to have uh, Claire take out the first two mercenaries. And um, I usually I just move a little back so that way you can't attack me from behind. Because otherwise this whole fight just becomes a giant who can get behind the other person kind of thing. So that's this is going to be agility levels now for Claire. Yeah, that's fine. She takes him out. We don't mind if she gets fatigued. Okay, so she's done a very good job taking out the first two mercenaries. We're fine if she uh, gets knocked out on this fight, though. Basically, we just sort of used this fight to help Claire catch up a little bit. Uh, let's see. It's probably going to knock us out. I am actually just going... I'm still going to keep fighting back. Uh... Okay, I actually let her get that in. That shouldn't throw stuff off. No, it was only worth 100. Okay. I'm going to let Andrew knock her out. Uh, just so that way we sort of... Um... Da -da 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 go, go, yeah. No, Andrew, stop talking. Uh, here, come on, Andrew. Come on. Oh. When you're so fast that it's like, Andrew, just just go ahead. Please just just knock me out. Thank you. I think if I even... No, just... There we go. She usually doesn't survive this long. That's fine. We have, like, a knockout for her built in. So now we have Franco come in. Uh, there will be an F for Franco by the end of this, I promise. Because, yeah, fighting Andrew's, like, super annoying because he's very hard to hit. You can see, like, my chances to hit are, like, sometimes only, like, 50 or 60%. Franco is, this is the power level. Let's see if we can get in one more hit. Nope. If, um, if we're knocked out by Andrew, it's not the worst. Do like it if uh, Franco can survive one more round, but looks like it is indeed an early F for Franco. Oh, oh yeah, Franco. F for Franco. F Franco. All right, we're gonna be really hopeful now. Uh, Cause this, yeah. 
Let's see. Come on, Cecilia. I. <gasps> she got it. Ooh, Yay. That's... Nice. Ah, uh, that is actually fantastic. Oh. Because uh, it's it's pretty um, rare that we actually have. Uh, yeah, she's gonna get the double level up. Um, here I'm gonna spoil part of the story. Uh, spoilers. Uh, Andrew is actually Cecilia's ex-boyfriend. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, yeah, so good for you, Cecilia. She's not going to survive this next uh, part, though. Um, but I need her to go right on up here and fireball. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. I'm actually going to have her move back a bit from Dion. Just to be safe. Okay. That's good. We need her to get... One... Okay, so we need her to get this level. We need her to get one more level off Dion. Oh, this is like the scary part. I'm going to have her defend. Hey, he still missed. Beautiful. He basically uses his strongest attack, uh, which will pretty much always put him into fatigue. And now we are going to get a power level. Ooh. Good. We, we caught up a bunch on time, so I'm glad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so basically what was going on there, um, we wanted... Uh, hello? Hello. Hello? Hello. Uh, one, <gasps> is it apologies. Before? It is... One second. I accidentally full screen stuff. Oh. <laughs> so apologies for the stream for like a second. I have to figure out how to get out of full screen mode. There we go. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, y'all. <laughs> that was me. We're okay. We're okay. That was just a minor technical thing. So apologies to, to chat. For things going wrong for just a second. We're good. No, my um, my controller was not responding. I was like, what is happening? We're good now. We're good. I probably just clicked off. Anyway. Uh, so now we have the Gratia. We're going to go and try and find the Ultra Gunner. Um, and uh, Andrew uh, does one nice thing in this entire run. He gives uh, Cecilia his uh, super speedy spinny ninja mecha. Uh, so that's now Cecilia's mech. Uh, it's a big upgrade for her. And basically brings her in line with, like, Bastion and Sidira in terms of, like, how deadly she is now. Uh, anyway, we were originally going to go through the Ferocity Kingdom. We can't. We end up in Muse Spell instead. No one wants to be here. This is the, the sort of uh, desert country. <laughs> And uh, it's full of sand, and you all know, sand, it's rough, it's coarse, it gets everywhere, and uh, we're in for, like, a really annoying fight. Uh, so up here is uh, Duke Radcott, the leader of Muspel, who is uh, springing a trap on us. He wants the uh, the Gratia, he wants the Ultra Gunner, he wants to defeat the Prince. He, he just has, like, a whole bunch of things he's trying to do right now. And uh, we want exactly none of them. Uh, unfortunately for this mission, uh, if Sidira gets knocked out, it is also game over. Uh, so we have to watch her HP levels pretty closely. We're going to do one risky thing at the very beginning of this fight, and I'm going to safety save before we do this. Uh, it's usually perfectly fine, but we do have to just hope that it all goes well. So I'm going to very quickly step off, safety save. All right. So what we're going to have Sadira do, she can't actually get outside of this uh, little square of, uh, of enemies. But uh, the big reason we wanted her to be the one to land the kill on Dion is she now has a uh, double attack. So if you thought she was strong before, just straight up uh, deleting people, she now can delete two people per turn. Uh, however, uh, this will put her into fatigue state status. Uh. Um, it's okay for this um, 
battle, she can tank two hits uh, easily from uh, these uh, annoying guys. Uh, but uh, pretty much after that, we need to get her out of there as soon as possible. Also, enemies like to focus on Bastion in this fight, so I'm going to have him just avoid their attacks rather than trying to answer back. Uh, mainly to keep him from being fatigued. Franco, though, hey, Franco, you gotta do something. Good for you. <laughs> oh, poor Franco. Uh. <laughs> I know, I tease Franco a lot, but he sort of ends up uh, being our kind of like... Butt monkey. Uh, yeah, ah. basically. Uh, we're also going to have Cecilia avoid. Oh, yeah, so one of the nice things about having Cecilia in the uh, the sort of uh, spinny uh, ninja mech is uh, she now has really nice evade stats, uh, which she's been needing for like this entire game, but now she finally has them. She also has great movement. Uh, let's see, who do I want her to have her fight? Let her go spin, spinny, spinny. And also, her mech make, makes that cool spinny noise. I, so I literally, gonna... I saw that animation, and I was like, that is a cool animation. And I'm very yes. glad we have it now. Uh, yeah, uh, if you're on the kingdom route, uh, you end up recruiting Andrew uh, instead. And, uh, oh, hey, Kickstrats. Aw, oh, Kickstrats failed. And uh, he instead gets to be your uh, spinny ninja. Uh, Spinja. He's got yeah, it's your Spinja. Like, Spinja, like, why is that not like, like, hey, hey, the, like the Ninja brand, like, um, um, you know, they're a blender company there. Hey, I remembered. <laughs> like, why do you not have like a salad spinner called a Spinja? Right? This, this, this sounds like a lost, like, marketing opportunity. C contact us. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a call. <laughs> Donate to the stream. <laughs> if if the Ninja Blending Company gave us a donation right now, I would I would die. <laughs> All right. So um, Sidera is now no longer fatigued. All right. Let's see. Franco, who are you going to help out with? Help out with this guy. The other really annoying thing about this fight is we're on sand. Uh, this actually. Uh, takes more uh, action points to move on, so it's just like uh, I had to put it up. It is with, actually like, course rough, and it gets everywhere. Yeah, we. I mean, we're in giant mecha, so <laughs> I'm not like surprised. Just All disappointed. Right. Just disappointed. There we go. Uh, but this is like we have like a couple other like harder fights. This is uh, Brad Cod coming in here. Uh, I am. Ooh, I'm going to have... Yeah, he only has a 33% chance to hit. I'm going to avoid that. Oh, that's not good. This is all very not good. We're going to have Sidira nope on out of all of this. Oh, she can still attack someone. Who can you attack? Yeah, you know what? Attack that dude. All right. Uh, I'm going to have Claire momentarily come over this way. Help out with uh, getting rid of this guy. Cecilia, though, actually... That help at all with that guy? Eh, we can have someone else take care of it. Cecilia can move up here, though. This is mainly to protect uh, Sidera. Here, Halak, you can take care of this. I'd like Halak to catch up a bit with levels anyway, uh, if at all possible. All right, so now we just have uh, Radcott and his guards left. A Franco got a level, yeah. So he's uh, just an agility level. But Franco, we kind of go back and forth uh, on where we're kind of uh, taking his stats. Oh, ooh, that's ooh, this is actually not good because that's a fatigue state for Bastion. Uh, we should be okay, but we're going to have to be. I'm going to. One second, let me. I had to do some very particular stats. We are going to, hello, hello, safety save. <laughs> there, this is just in case anything happens to Bastion. Uh, let's see, can I actually get in here? It's right here, I think. I can spiral dive. Yes. Uh, okay, I have to just watch out for Radka. Uh, no, no. You're gonna fight Sadira, okay. Oh no. 
Hey, guess what? It's a good thing I did. Ugh. That's disappointing, but that's why we saved you saved. And we'll we'll just change that up next. Come on, hey, let me out of the game over screen. All right. I'm sorry we don't get to hear the awesome menu music. F for Franco and also everyone. <laughs> and it's okay. That's why that's why I was like, you know what? Let's safety save. And like I said, my my estimate has time built into it in case we ran into situations like that. So what we're going to do is we're just, you know, Sidira, you are just going to just sit this round out. Okay, hopefully. Okay, yeah, there we go. Bashing can tank that hit. Ugh, it's Bradcott that I'm worried about. Just please just do like Earthquake. Okay. All right, now we have to basically, all right. Let's see, Cecilia, come on in here. Let's start. Let's get down to business. Let's and, and get this... down to business to donate. To, <laughs> <laughs> to donate some funds. <laughs> Did they right. send me daughters? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, guess what? Uh, nope, we're not doing that. Okay. Franco, hey Franco, can you come in here and uh can I come get on, a, Franco. an announcement in real quick? Yes, please. We just met twenty five thousand dollars. Yay! Ah, Incredible hooray. work. Great job, everyone. Thank you all so much for your donations. That's halfway to our overall goal. Uh, can I get in some donations while we're while we're here and excited? Yes, yes. We we uh, we're good now. We we're we're totally safe now. Okay, awesome. And and luckily we didn't lose too much time. We because we did good safety saving. We only lost like a minute. So that I'll, I'll take that. Go ahead, go ahead, please. All right. So we have one hundred dollars from Rash Eye, Monsoon, and Dwarf Prince here. We're happy to finally donate a little more and help support this amazing cause. Keep up the incredible work, and best of luck for all your runs. Oh, can we get a new frog fact, please, for the girls? By the way, greetings from Germany. Uh, my frog fact for you is that Kermit the Frog was made in May 9th, 1955, and his eyes are ping pong balls cut in half. Now, 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 what are your thoughts, though, on Sam? Ooh. Sam the Eagle? No, no, no. Sam was the original, like, sort of prototype. Oh. Friend. From, like, Sam and Friends. That's kind of creep. No, Sam was a different, was a different puppet, I think. Okay, are we going to go down or am I seriously going to Google <laughs> Sam and Friends Muppets on the GDQ? Yeah. Okay, sure. Huh. Sam. Go, well, yeah, Sam, Sam is definitely has some prototypical Kermit-ness to him. It's like, surprise, you've activated my trap card that I'm actually a huge fan of Jim Henson. <laughs> no, I, I actually do love Jim Henson. I love Jim Very Henson. Like, l like literally um, the first, like, uh, oh, crud, I did the thing again. I apologize. I apologize when we're, all right, we need to go back. Sorry about that. <laughs> I was trying to adjust things on my screen. There we go. Sorry about that. Sorry for, for sudden zoom in mode. No, no, no. Like literally the first real date I had with my girlfriend, we went to uh, a puppetry museum that had a Jim Henson wing. Oh my God, that was me and my boyfriend. <laughs> We went to we went to a puppetry museum in well it it was a museum of the moving image in uh in Queens and it was so interesting and I spent so much time in the Muppets section it was oh my goodness. I love the Muppets I, I I I will tell you Liz if you ever have the chance to go to the Atlanta Puppetry Museum ooh I like, should I'm, it I is, live it in is, Atlanta it is one of the hidden uh, gems of the city that like and it has an absolutely amazing Jim Henson wing. Ooh. And it's gorgeous, like, and there's like a, there's like a stained glass, like, window of Kermit the Frog. <laughs> like, the whole <laughs> thing is amazing. They have so many really awesome puppets. Hi, hello. You, <laughs> we're going to get, like, completely off uh, track talking about uh, Muppet Facts. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Muppet Facts. 
I, I will definitely do Muppet Facts. I love Muppet I, Facts. I, I love Muppets. I'm actually very excited. Uh, I get to go to uh, to Disney this year, and I'm Ooh. like, I want all the Muppet merch. <laughs> <laughs> have you but, have you seen the... There's a documentary by... Um, oh, what are they called? Uh... Defunct Land. Defunct Land. They did. Yes. A, they did a documentary <laughs> on like the entire history of the Muppets. So the most good. Interesting thing I've ever I've ever watched. Oh my it god. It made me cry a lot, but Same. I really loved it. I was sobbing at the end. Aww. Anyway. Uh, anyway, like a bunch of story just happened while we were talking about Muppets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll very quickly get you caught up on the story. Uh, so we never actually saw Sadira and Dwyer's dad, the Emperor, but it doesn't matter. Uh, he's dead. Uh, Sadira has been uh, blamed for the crime uh, because Faulkner is uh, manipulating Dwyer. Uh, and now uh, Sadira is a criminal. All of us are criminals. And uh, now we got to fight all these people. It's it's not good, but we now have the Ultra Gunner. Uh, that's that shiny uh, white mech that uh, Bastion is now in. Uh, unfortunately, it starts out kind of slow at first. Um, it's sort of a, uh, it's definitely like more of like a sort of slow moving, hard hitting mech. Um, but we'll try and uh, route a bunch of uh, agility points into Bastion to have him catch up. Also, we're going to have Sidira do her thing where she just deletes people to kind of take out these first two guys. Uh, the enemies in this fight don't tend to move a lot unless you get like wet right up um, in their face. And we're going to use that to our advantage. Uh, there's Bastion finally getting his first move. But, uh, so I'm going to just go right on up. Yeah, there we go. Cecilia now has Wind Strike. That is a big help. So this is just sort of where we're going to sort of have um, Claire and Halak uh, chilling down here on this bridge. Uh, everyone else is kind of going to go up here to, uh, to take out these bodyguards. Uh, we, uh, while Faulkner is here on the battlefield, we actually don't have to fight him. Um, if we knock out, or even if we just like basically like breathe on Dwyer, they'll both leave. Um, however, um, it's uh, we have to kind of wait for Dwyer to come to us. Let's see, Halak should be at, let's see, agility 17. Okay, power level for Halak. Okay, one sec, I had to sort of... Let me actually mark off where Halak is on my little sheet. I actually have a physical version of my giant spreadsheet. Uh, Garvey, since you actually saw the giant spreadsheet, what do you think of the uh, giant spreadsheet? Oh, I think it's pre pretty pretty good to have, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, basically I have a, a huge spreadsheet that has uh, every single uh, level up in the game, uh, has all my shopping notes, my safety saving notes, so I tried to make sort of a, a shorthand version of everything because I'm slowly getting to the point uh, where I can kind of run this without uh, detailed notes. I basically need them, let's see, power 24, agility 20, dexterity level for Franco. Let me actually mark all those off. Do, do, cool. Uh, actually here, just, just avoid. So we're just going to sort of uh, make our way through. Basically, we have to wait for Dwyer to come down off the hill. Uh, Faulkner's uh, presence there. Let's see. Cecilia is... Okay, she's at good dexterity levels, power levels now. Uh, just because of where Franco is positioned, we actually can't sort of pass behind him. Um, I want to win strike. Can I get, yeah. can I get in? Uh, oh, go, please. One or two. Okay, so $25 from Steel Morgan that just says hashtag Muppet Facts. Hashtag Muppet Facts. I am all about this. More Muppet Facts. And uh, we also, can I get one big one? or? Yeah. Oh, yeah, go for it, please. Okay. You got a big the, one. The, uh, the donation that sent us over the edge, $390 from the Yeti. Uh, uh, the Yeti. Okay. Oh, I love the Yeti. Hey, all. Yeti here. We're very excited to be a part of Forest Hotels 2020. It is excellent to be able to offer our support with an amazing tea from LLK. We'll donate $5 from every tea sold to the Malala Fund. 
Tees will be available until Saturday at midnight CST. Let's go! Let's go. I shout outs to the Yeti. They're all just super cool people. Uh, I've uh, done uh, t-shirt making, so I have nothing but like respect for all the work they put in. And their tees are all just so good. I'm wearing a Yeti tee right now, so. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> uh, I am wearing. Uh, uh, I'm wearing the uh, the Chrono Trigger uh, uh, SGDQ uh, 2019 shirt because uh, I had to be on. I had to be on brand. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I am. I'm also very on brand because I'm wearing their Bubsy T-shirt. That is exceptionally on brand. <laughs> <laughs> that is very unfortunately uh, on brand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, that, uh, that's a little annoying. Um, but, oh, Muppet Facts. Uh, this is actually one of my uh, a Muppet Facts that I really like. Uh, so my favorite Muppet is uh, is Gonzo. Uh, Ooh, I love that's Gonzo. a good choice. Gonzo is such a good choice. Um, but one of the fun things, uh, if you uh, pay attention uh, between the first season and the second season of The Muppet Show, it's actually two completely different Gonzo uh, models. Because uh, they went in uh, in the second um, season and they added in a bunch of uh, mechanics uh, so that way he could be more expressive. So that's how you can tell the difference uh, between the two different Gonzo models. Very interesting. Thank you. Give us hashtag Muppet Facts donations, <laughs> and we will give you a new Muppet Fact every single time. The thing is that this this is very on brand for me. People who have seen me uh, do uh, uh, commentary, especially for uh, Final Fantasy VII run, know that I will commonly do uh, donations for FF7 facts. <laughs> so fact, I'm fact like, yes. Fact donations are very good. Yeah. I, I am always here for fact donations. Uh, I, I also kind of want to see some fan art of like Kermit in a giant spinning mech. I would like, like you have no idea how like incredibly happy Kermit slash Vanguard Bandit's um, fan art would make me. All right, I'm going to scoot around this way. It it's it's annoying if Sadir is the one who talks to who gets attacked by Dwyer. Yep, that's what happened. Uh, guess what, little brother? Hard dive. <laughs> Get a level up for hitting your brother. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Sadir is actually now at max power. This is great going forward. Um, let's see. Hey, can we just take out this last dude? No, we cannot, apparently. All right, Claire. Oh, wait, nope. Come on, come on. Let me just throw a fireball at you. All right. Oh, okay, we made up a little time there. Nice. All right. Uh, so now we get to do uh, one sort of fun thing, which is we get to safety flirt. So uh, we're also gonna be just checking uh, Cecilia's affection levels. Cecilia, I need I need a red heart, please. Can you have a red heart? Red heart. Red heart. There we go. Yay. Uh, having a red heart means that she's at max affection. Uh, usually she's there. I think probably because she has been lagging a little behind in levels. Uh, you get you get morale for when you get levels. So hopefully that has kicked her over the edge. I might do one extra safety flirt just to be completely safe. Uh, so this is another uh, sort of uh, two-wave situation. Eh, I probably should have just had her spiral dive. That's fine. Oh, man. Unfortunately, like, Bash and just sort of hanging in the back here, not able to do his, like, full potential, which is basically uh, throwing lightning bolts at everybody now. We'll get there. Uh, so we have this uh, fight here where... Actually, can Halleck go anywhere else? I'm going to actually have Halleck go up here. Because I kind of want Claire right here. All right. I think Cecilia can do some turbulence from back here. Oh, one HP. That's that's annoying. Maybe. 
So uh, we have to sort of get through uh, all these enemies that are here on the field to start, and then we'll have. Uh, we're just gonna avoid. You're not fighting. You're not worth fighting. Oh dang, that's an insult. Ah. Uh. <laughs> He's not. I'm just like, I don't like. Oh, wait, nope. Not quite. It's like an anime insult. <laughs> you know what? It's, well, we're playing a super anime game. Of course, I'm going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Omi wa mo, not worth fighting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's, there, uh, I don't. I can speak like some Japanese. I'm not fluent though. I, I sort of joke that my level of Japanese is the fluency to play games like Crisis Core. <laughs> and like beyond that, I know nothing. It's great. Can I can I play a Final Fantasy game? Okay, great. Uh, I don't need to know anything else. Uh, let's see, who do we have that we can, uh, let's just take care of the guy in front of us. Let's see, where do you need to be? You need to be getting agility because you're slow right now. Alright. Alright, Franco here. You know what, Franco? Just 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 kick this guy. It's all you're good for, Franco. Uh, <laughs> I mean a, Franco like at least like, you know, we, we joke a lot, but he definitely tanks a lot of hits for us. Uh let's see. Cecilia can come in here, going to use her wind strike attack. That's nice. Where is Cecilia? Uh, she is at uh, one more agility level. Yes. Okay. And and let's see. Let me start marking these off. Can I slide in with some donations? Oh, go please, please, please. We have more donations from the Vanguard Bandits uh, fandom. <laughs> Yay! Ten dollars from Mustak. I love Vanguard Bandits. I went through so much trouble getting this game as a kid because it was hard to find. I had to convince my mom, who had never bought anything online before, to let me buy it from a stranger on eBay. She eventually bought it for me, and I've been replaying it now and then ever since. Aww. Yeah, finding finding a physical copy of this game is actually pretty hard nowadays. Uh, I still have my original physical copy. Uh, but here you go. Here's, here is a pro tip and a Vanguard Bandits fact. This game is available on the PSN for PlayStation 3, a PSP, PS Vita, and PS TV. So if you would like to, if you have watched this run and you found this game to be interesting, uh, you can totally uh, go and uh, pick it up if you want to and uh, play it digitally. Oh, this person's annoying. <laughs> yeah, we're fine. So, uh, so both Galvis and Ganlon are, you actually have to fight them both. Um, and they brought along some extra lackeys. Uh, this is a fight where it can get a little tricky. We might end up losing some people. Um, we're gonna hope that that doesn't happen. Let's see, well, fire, Fireball will not put me into fatigue. Let's see. So I usually try to take out, there we go. Kind of everyone else first and then sort of wait for uh, for Ganlon and uh, Galvis to kind of, no, oh, she doesn't have enough. Let's see, I should have enough for Fireball. There we go. Hey, that's a surprise level for Claire. Let's see. They're also now at max power. We're now gonna start throwing everything into agility for her. Uh, we're sort of nearing the end game, so we're starting getting uh, via all of our very calculated level ups. Everyone's starting getting very strong. It's exactly what we want. Uh, I'm going to actually have her go here and uh, use her wind strike. There we go. Unfortunately, this means that like these sort of like generic units don't give us a lot of exp anymore, but give us enough here now and then. Let's see. Agility. One more agility level. Oh, this is where we have some funky sort of going back and forth between agility and dexterity. All right. Uh, stop. Leave Halak alone. She's a nice grandma. I mean, she's not actually a nice grandma. She's actually a I will fight you grandma. Oh, those are the best grandmas. We, the thing is that we actually don't, uh, because we kind of skip over all her dialogue, uh, Halleck actually just straight up talks like Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> like, we've like sort of been skipping over that this entire time, but she's actually, like, they localized her as this sort of weird Yoda reference. Wow. Hmm, mm, like... Mm. <laughs> oh, well, that's like one of like the good, like, ones. 
uh, uh, if overconfident you be, a head of fat you shall have. Like, like that's like what he actually <laughs> sounds like. And we're just kind of like skipping over all that. All right. Um, do I want to fight Gamlon? To get rid of these king kingdom nerds. Let's see. Uh, she's gonna get fatigued no matter what I do. If she's gonna get fatigued, I'm gonna have her come over here and fight Ganlon. Uh, oh, we lost Halak. F for Halak for once. Oh, uh, F for Halak. Oh, F for Battle Grandma. F for Battle Grandma. Good. Galvas missed. That's good. That's what we want him to do. Uh, I don't think I can really do anything without getting fatigued. Ooh, hey, I have one thing I can do. And she missed. And now I'm like, no, here, just just sit this round out. Just because this is, again, a fight where there's like a high chance of us getting knocked out, I'm going to play this a little safe, especially after we had that wipe earlier. But we're going to have Claire come in. And uh, there we go. Good job, Claire. Um, Bash move up one step. Uh, unfortunately, we have to deal with some dialogue here. Okay, good. All right. Uh, now we're back to like a respectable level of really. In case you didn't realize that, she just missed on a ninety-nine percent chance to hit <laughs> twice. Uh... Not once, twice. It's okay. Uh, Galvis is now. Um, fatigued, so we'll be knocking him out post haste. Well, let's take out Gamlon while we're at it. A Cecilia level. Where are we going with uh, Cecilia's levels right now? Power max. Uh, here you can you can here just there. Go away. All right. Uh, I'm just gonna not even bother with these people moving. Hey, Franco. Franco, are you gonna? Are you gonna? Mm! <laughs> he missed. Ninety-three percent chance, and he missed. Uh... Like, Franco, you're gonna be kicked off this team if you don't like start like shaping up. Why? But Why are you? Who missing? will we f now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm about to just be like, Franco, get off my team. <laughs> like, why are you missing? Cecilia, come come in here. This is why Cecilia is actually waifu. There we go. Hey, level up, though. I'll take it. Uh, let's see. This is going to go two points into power and then one point into agility. Ah, that was annoying just because we had some misses in there. Um, anyway... Uh, we have uh, right back in Nordelaine. Uh, we're sort of seeking a safe harbor here with uh, Duke Logan. Uh, since, uh, like I said, uh, Sidira kind of got kicked out of the Empire because she's suspected of having uh, killed her father. Uh, she's like very sad about this. Very understandably so. But in comes uh, Bastion. Uh, to come and try and uh, cheer her up and sort of apologize for getting her caught up in this giant mess. Um, but he's like really happy that uh, she helped him and she's just like, oh, if you only take me into your arms and kiss me softly. And she's like having like all of her like delightfully girlish thoughts. And then she gets like mad when he doesn't do it. And then she says, leave me alone. And we're like, oh, I'll respect your boundaries and leave you alone. And she's just like, oh, crap. <laughs> 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 oh, Sidira. She 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 sinned when she should have dared. Um turns out uh Claire had been trying to be like a good like wing lady and uh set uh Sidira up. Um and then she's like like I'm sorry that Bastion didn't like ask you out or anything. Do you wanna like go have some drinks? And so they go and have drinks. Um, and now we have to deal with uh, what is actually happening. Uh, so we now have a new uh, type of mech in this game called the Sharkings. We do not like Sharkings. Sharkings are very scary and they hit very hard. Uh, so, but we still have to go and we'll have uh, two uh, fights with them. Uh, this is our first one. Uh, so, but first before that, uh, we gotta go shopping. <gasps> Yes, this is our last shopping trip of the run, actually. 
because uh, now we have some new stuff to buy. So we're going to go down. We are going to shop. Uh, guess who we're buying stuff for? Uh, did you say Cecilia? It's Cecilia. Uh, let's see. Usually I do the amulet first. So we get her uh, that amulet. We get her this stone. And we get... Uh, we're going to need one Widowmaker and then two Durandars. And we're good. So, Franco... I guess you're not off the team just yet. Here, have a better sword. See if that makes you better. Uh, Halak, you also get a better sword. And then Cecilia gets a completely new uh, overhaul, gets a new sword, gets a new stone, gets a new amulet. All right, and we're ready to go into the first of the two uh, Shark King missions. Uh, yeah, so you can see them. Those are the Sharkings. They have, they're, they're real pointy. We don't like how pointy they are. Uh, so we will be safety saving at the start of this just to be safe. Uh, usually this fight isn't super dangerous, but it, it, it can get dicey. Um, we should be okay though. Okay. All right, so Sadir is going to move up here. We're sort of going to use this uh, little hedge here uh, as our kind of... Actually, I'm going to have Cecilia move back one step. She's still a little squishy. Uh, after this uh, mission, though, we will find out if we have done everything su successfully and are now on um, Cecilia's uh, ending. Have you ever not gone on Cecilia's ending? Uh, when I when I started learning this game at the beginning, I forgot. I think like one of my very first practice runs, I forgot to safety flirt, and I accidentally ended up on uh, Sadira's ending, and I and I just kind of noped out because Sadira's ending is hard. I should actually play it casually at some point, just to actually see it. Because uh, since I've been learning this game, I haven't really gone back to the uh, the casual game. Um, I, I should, just because there's a bunch of, like, like, uh, the, the Ruin route is, has, it's supposed to be, like, very silly compared to, like, all the other routes in the game. Um, I'm going to, do I, you know what, I can take this guy out. I'm just going to delete him. Delete it. Okay, hey, yeah, come over here and wind strike this guy. Uh, Cecilia actually now has her ultimate attack, uh, Somersault. I know that doesn't sound much like an ultimate attack, but it is. Okay. Hey, another level up. Let's see. This is a dexterity level. Uh, Franco, can you actually come over here and help out? Franco, come on, Franco. Hey, Franco earned his keep. Good for you. Uh, he's probably going to... I'm going to actually have air protect Sadira. Alright. Actually, let's have her use a flare bomb. Cool. Like I said, usually this fight is... isn't too bad. Uh, we just have to be careful. Uh, mainly if they get too close to Bastion. Someone in chat asked me to ask you uh, yes. if you ended up on the bad ending and if you got traumatized by it. Yes, yes, we went over this at the beginning. I got ended up on the bad ending of the Kingdom route and I was so mad. I was like, like I was livid uh, over having that happen. Uh, so spoiler, you know, so spoiler alert, uh, the bad ending in Vanguard Bandits is legit bad. It is, it's so like infuriating because you're probably going to end up on it um, because it relies on the um, the morale of your entire party. Guess what? If you are like me and were sort of like a teenager in high school trying to play this game for funsies, uh, you probably weren't very good at it. And because of that, you probably had low party morale uh, and you ended up on on the bad ending, like kind of like through no fault of your own. And uh, I'm I'm still mad about it. I'm, <laughs> like I'm mad like 20 years later. That's how long I hold a grudge. Also, F for Halak. Uh -huh. F for Halak. 
Um, let's see though. No, nah, hopefully not F for uh, for Branko. He might survive. Uh, I'm going to <coughs> actually. I think I just do a turbulence attack. Cool. Cool. All right. So we only got Zakov left. And hey, remember how I said earlier that we'd have to deal with him? Hey, this is what we're doing now. All right. Come on, Cecilia. So we're just going to have like everyone just sort of uh, just team up to uh, to take him down. Uh, ooh, wow, an F for Claire. That's, that's rare that that happened. <laughs> there you go, Franco. Enjoy your level. All right. Well, who's Zakov going to fight? <laughs> okay, then. Zakov has declared... Oh, wait, no! Franco lived! Surprise! <laughs> Surprise turn of events. Uh, actually, let's have Bakshi go up here. Ah, crud, he moved just outside my range. That's annoying. I should be able to spiral dive. Yeah, I still have to deal with his, uh, dialogue. Ah, that was a little annoying, because, uh, he moved around us. Hey, level for Sidira. That's nice. At this point, I basically don't have to look at my stat sheet anymore. I pretty much know where things are going. Because it's just basically just throw everything into power, then throw everything into agility, then throw everything into dexterity. Kind of in that order. All right, let's make sure. Cool, we are on the correct route. Yay. Uh, that, yay, that, that first uh, bit of dialogue from Duke Logan uh, will let you know which route you're on. If you Also, Claire makes that face, and it's the best face. Okay. <laughs> I love her face there. Like my favorite, like little dialogue box in the entire game. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah. So so long as we see, I take it you're able to repulse their attacks, Adira. We are on the correct mission. So, so this is where the the two uh, routes split. Uh, so if we were on Sadira's route, we'd have to go different set of three uh, final missions. But we are on Cecilia's route, so we have uh, the next sort of. Three missions to get to, so we're getting pretty close to the ending. Um, can you all do me a big favor? Let me know uh, where the incentive's at for this run, so that way I kind of know going forward. All right, we have not met either yet. Okay, so you have a little bit of time left, chat, to meet uh, either of those. And for those who are just joining in, this is Frame Fatales, Frost Fatales 2020. We are raising money for the Malala Fund, and we have incentives. If you uh, intend to donate, uh, you can go ahead and put down your donation towards one of the incentives. Our big incentive today is Oblivion. We have other smaller ones like the Vanguard intro cutscene and the battle animations for the uh, for the final battle. Yeah, please, like, uh, here, I'll give you a little hint. Uh, the final boss battle, if we do it right, is going to be over in like five turns. Uh, so that's why I offer the ability to turn on the battle animation to actually make it a dramatic fight. And we are actually, before we have Palak go, we are going to save. Um, you can see me sort of setting everything up. We're going to have this battle uh, sort of take a different turn in just a second. Also, you, we, I would love to share with you all the opening cutscene. It's really fantastic. If you like quality 90s uh, anime animation, you are in for a treat. Yep. Uh, so anyway, uh, hey, it's them route. Uh, they're all here. Uh, they actually would like to make an alliance with us because, uh, Faulkner's, like, going around and just, like, causing trouble everywhere. Uh, and they're like, well, we've heard that the princess and Prince Bastion are actually trying to, like, end the war and everything, and hey, Ioni and Reyna are back, and they're like, yeah, he's a dude. Uh, but in comes Faulkner. Faulkner now has uh, his ultimate mech, the Shadow Attack. Oh yeah, Attack is the term for mechs in this game. But it is called the Zulhorn. Uh, it's very evil. It's uh, it runs on the blood of the innocents because you know anime tropes. D does it uh, actually? <laughs> it really does. It runs on the blood of the innocents. Uh, it also makes this noise. And uh, that noise turns people into jerks. 
uh, makes them go out to brunch and then not tip their wait staff. It makes them, you know, uh, litter. It makes them just, just, just be like all around, like not nice people. Uh, so unfortunately we now have to fight everyone here because they have decided that that's what they want to do. Um, and then Faulkner's just going to kind of, uh, run away. And now we're sort of stuck, uh, cleaning up with all this mess. So, this fight, um, we're sort of at levels where it should be safe. Uh, but I did safety save just to be... Actually, here, let me... Well, doesn't matter. I already am on this. We're gonna go for it. Here. Uh, so first, uh, matter of business is taking out Zarya. He is the most dangerous, uh, person on this field. Uh, I'm very sad that we don't have battle animations on, because his mech is amazing. It's my favorite mech in the entire game. It's a centaur. It's a centaur oh, mech. Yeah. Like, I want you all to just picture that. Let's see. Ranko's kind of in the middle here, so he's just gonna do that. Uh, Cecilia's gonna be... Nope. We're gonna somersault Galvis. Uh, we're probably gonna get a bunch of levels in this fight. Remember what I said earlier? Uh, characters who are unique and have special portraits, uh, give more experience. Guess what pretty much everyone in this battle is? They're people with portraits. And, uh, they're gonna give us a bunch more experience. So I'm just sort of taking people out, uh, like, sort of as fast as I can. Dex needs to be 15. Do some extra agility. We should just be able to just strength slash. But luckily, oh, see, uh, like I said, boatloads of experience. This is now another dexterity level. So we're going to sort of do our best to sort of chew our way through everyone as fast as we can. Actually, I'm going to have... After this level, I'm going to have Cecilia kind of move over. Uh, actually, I'm going to have her stay there. I'm going to have her let her keep fighting... Uh, Ganlon. Hey, Franco. Uh, can you fight Reyna and not, like, completely die? <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> nope, that's not happening. Uh, here. Do that instead. Yeah, Reyna is actually super dangerous in this fight. Alright, let's see. We should have Bastion start taking out some of the generics back there. Ganlon's not doing anything. Ioni might actually be... Okay. Yeah, okay, good. Reyna is luckily not doing anything. This guy... Oh, wants to come and fight, um... Halak. That's fine. Uh... So this is sort of like a big push towards the end. Uh, let's see, Fireball, Gamma. Nice job, Halleck. I'm actually gonna have Halleck move up a step. Just so that she's no longer getting back attacked. Wow, she got a double level up. Go, Halleck. Uh, let's see. Alright, Sidira can start deleting people again. Uh, we're gonna have her actually go right after Ione. Let's see, Cecilia... Um... Also, we don't mind any now any longer if Cecilia gets knocked out, because we are safely on her route. The route will not change going forward. Uh, so if Cecilia gets knocked out, it's more just annoying than anything else. Uh, actually, Fireball... Let's see if we can also just take out... Ah, uh, missed. Not cool. Uh, let's see... My Lightning Striker? Uh, I had to listen to dialogue. That's fine. So she's gone. We only basically have the, uh, the generics left. Uh, 
Alright, Celia can come in. Overall, this is this this was a nice clean mission. Uh, basically, if you just sort of leave like anyone, um, like of of the uh, more powerful characters alive too long, that's when it starts getting uh, dangerous. Oh my goodness! Come on, Bastion, you can do better than this. There we go. Uh, this should be a power level. Yep. Hey, that was actually a gold split. Nice. Hey, good Hi. job. Nice. To be fair, this run is actually very reset heavy on the early missions. Um, we had mission two go pretty much as well as it could. Uh, but if mission two goes bad, you basically just end up resetting the run if you're going for PB attempts. So so the things where it's just like, actually getting to the end of the game is nice. <laughs> <laughs> so... We have uh, mission 19 here. So we're almost done. We're so close to being done. So if you want to get in the donation for the, especially for the uh, final boss fight, uh, those have to come in soon because I have to cut that off once we start that fight. So we got one mission to go. Next mission usually takes about five-ish minutes for me, just to kind of give everybody a heads up. So about five to six minutes is what you got. So uh, let's see. Oh, PB says, okay. I am overestimating myself. So PB says probably closer to seven minutes. Huh. So seven minutes or so. To what you got? Uh, so we have to have one last uh, face off with uh, Zakov. Uh, also, Dwyer is here. Uh, poor Dwyer has been uh, brainwashed. Is completely under Faulkner's control. Is 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 bad. It's not a good scene. Um. So we have to deal with Dwyer uh, and Zakhoff and this uh, collection of Sharkings. All right, so Sadira can go up to, I believe it's right here is right. Nope, that's actually too far. I wanted to be right here. This sort of first uh, turn, I'm being very careful with her. There we go. So sort of what we've done earlier is we're setting up a sort of protective barrier so that way we can't get back attacked. So we're not really worried too much about attacking too much on this first turn. I kind of had uh, Sidira get in there while she had the chance. Halak usually goes right here. And then... I actually can't flip the camera in this game, but I tend to just keep it in one space because that's where all my reference screenshots are. Uh, so there's a high probability we'll lose both um, Halak and uh, Franco on this fight, which is fine. Uh, this is literally the last fight we will uh, see them on. Uh, we're uh. Uh, After this fight, we are going to lose access to all of our party members, except for two. Uh, you can guess which two of those are <laughs> based off of what the ending name is. And we'll sort of explain why we do that uh, story-wise. Uh, she's going to be... Nope. But where can she not be fatigued? All right, so we're gonna have some somersaulting. Hey, uh, we we do want um, Cecilia especially to get some level here, but for everyone else, levels don't mean anything anymore. So uh, let's. See. Uh, I'm gonna have her wind strike. Yeah, also, Dwyer's now finally, like, worth experience. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and go from the side here. No, 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 we don't need to do that. Okay. I think I can... Nope, uh, what do I got? Almost, uh, taking him out. Uh... Ooh, this, this is dangerous no matter what I do. Uh... Oh. Can I get rid of the guy right in front of me? Nope. Can I get rid of any of these guys? I can. Probably be a little... Like I said, uh, we're at the point where if Sidira gets kicked out, it's... We're fine. It'll be very annoying, but it will be fine. Because really, we just need... Like, literally only Bashing can survive this fight, and we're... The, the game is will be cool.
Alright, let's see. Um, can I fight either of these guys? I'm probably gonna lose Halak no matter what I do on this turn. Um, 56 or... I'm gonna have her go after this guy. F for Halak. F for Halak. Uh, yep, she's out of the, the fight for the rest of this... Actually... The rest of the game. Yeah, she's gone. I mean, she, she's not actually, like, dead or anything. <laughs> uh, she... Not actual Fs. <laughs> not actual Fs, just... She's just knocked out for the rest of this fight, and since she's not in the last fight... Like, yeah, we're done with Halak for this game. Good job, Halak! You, you lagged a little bit, but that's partly on me. Oh, wow, double level. Yeah, we're gonna go into uh, the final boss with basically ma max like stats we care about. Uh, Cecilia. Oh. Okay. Now I'm like, uh, hello. Guess where we're going? We're going right behind you. Uh, hey, he did not do anything. Wow. Okay. Oh, probably because they're almost fatigued. That's probably why they skipped their turns. I'm realizing. That's good, that's good. Makes makes my life easier. We're just going to end. Okay. Franco, get in here. Hey, we did not I was expecting Fs for Franco. Not yet, apparently. I was uh, holding on. I know, it's probably gonna happen. Oh, hey, actually, I can somersault. Okay. And like I said, this is just part of this run is always going to be some level of improv. Alright, so now we can start moving up here to fight uh, Zakov. This is actually better than it's been in some of my uh, my fights for this one. Uh, okay, we're just going to avoid. He only has a 28% chance to hit. Uh, wow! Well, F for Sadira! Aww. That, that was not what I was expecting. I mean... Oh. oh, I probably should have waited on that attack. Let's see. I know he's not going uh, to... Let's see where... I mean, Bastion should be okay. Basically, he's using this attack called Cutting Wheel, which we don't like. Cutting Wheel is dangerous. So we're going to try and basically throw what we can at him to kind of overwhelm him. We want to see if we can fatigue him. All right, come on, Claire. Get right on in there. Okay, good. We got him fatigued. Uh, go on, Franco. Be the hero we all know you've been meant to be this entire time. Good job, Franco. But we'll let uh, we'll let Bastion get that last kill. All right. Hey, saved a teeny bit more time. Nice. All right. So we're going into the last uh, battle. This is sort of absolute, complete and total last call for the uh, extra dramatic final ba boss battle. We have not met that. Ah, uh, well, that's okay. You know what? We got to do it the speedy way then. And that's fine. Got to go fast. We will go fast instead. That is totally fine. It's also kind of fine because uh, turning on the boss, the animations during the final boss fight, also means I have to give everyone a very uh, strict flashing warning. Oh. Oh. Uh. Because there's a lot of flashing that happens during those attacks. And uh, I, I would rather not have that happen to people, and that's fine. But I, I like being able to show off the, uh, the animations. All right. Oop. Sorry, there it had a momentary. But we're good. Uh, anyway, uh, Bastion uh, says some smart things. Um, basically, figures out the sort of strategy. So we're going to sort of divide up our forces with um, Sidira, uh, Franco, Halleck, and Claire going back to Nord Lane, getting a bunch of help there. Uh, we're going to go reach out to the Marquis de Leon. Um, uh, Duke Zaria is going to rally forces in Avalon. So there's like a bunch of stuff that's going to happen like off screen that is just sort of implied that we know like nothing about. 
Uh, but Bastion is going to go stomp his way into the Imperial capital and uh, fight Faulkner 1v1. Uh, Sadira's like, but Bastion, what if I never see you again? Spoilers, we will never see Sadira again for this run. <laughs> we just we just never get back to her. All right. So this is the actual cutoff uh, for the incentive uh, for the dramatic boss mission. Am I being dramatic or are we just going to... not being dramatic. That's fine. That's fine. We got to be speedy instead. Uh, I will at least read out uh, dr the dramatic love confession because it's great. Ooh. Oh. I love the dramatic love confession. Anyway, so we kind of stomp up here. We're going to tell Faulkner we're going to have our revenge. And uh, Faulkner's going to uh, do this attack called like Heaven's Gate. It's very powerful. It's very scary. Uh, it like takes off like most of Bastion's uh, HP, and it turns out Cecilia has been working for Faulkner the entire time. Uh, he has ordered her to kill Bastion, and uh, but Bastion. Uh, so Cecilia's like dot dot dot. Bastion's just like Cecilia. This isn't you, Cecilia. This isn't the life you want or the life you deserve. I know who you really are, Cecilia, and I love you. And then he continues on with like, Come to me, Cecilia, and be with me. Together we will make the life that you have always wanted. And she's like, Yes, Bastion! I've been longing to hear those words of all my heart, and now to hear you speak them. And then uh, she reveals that her contract was with Faulkner was only to bring the Ultra Gunner to him. Uh, he says something that makes me want to punch him very hard. Uh, both Bastion and I are like, excuse me, that is my wife? You do not talk to her that way? And Bastion is just full of the power of love and respecting women. And uh, the two of us are now going to take on Faulkner. Uh, it's fine if he gets that first hit. It, we are going to be super duper... By basically what we're going to do. Hey, last minute level up, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> level ups that mean absolutely nothing at this point. All right, so we are going to just keep throwing lightning strikes on uh, Faulkner. That's fine. You see, we're both fatigued. Uh, Cecilia's going to come on in. We're going to have her wind strike and end her turn uh, and then she gets to the media turn and that's it <laughs> oh, wow. that's the entire boss fight uh, she's probably going to get a last minute level up uh time will be on fade out of uh, so fade to black and i will give you that heads up and time g g g g g g g we got our little epilogue here um Bastion has uh, abdicated his position uh, to the throne of Ferastia. He, uh, everyone else uh, has, uh, basically, Sidira is now the Empress. Uh, there's going to be peace among the land, uh, but uh, uh, the Ultra Gunner has been resealed, and um, he has decided to uh, just be with uh, Cecilia. They're going to go and just have a quiet time, like a honeymoon on the beach. By the way, may I ask you something? Don't know quite know how to say this. How long are you gonna keep wearing that maid's uniform? And then it turns out like it says like I like wearing this maid uniform. It's got like pockets. It's super comfy. I'm gonna keep wearing it. Whatever. And that's literally the end of this route. <laughs> like all the political stuff just fades into the background, and there's just like let's just joke about maid outfits for like a minute, and then we get this incredibly like like the end of like a '90s movie like ending song there's no like lyrics or anything uh but let me know did we are we able to watch cutscene we did not meet that one ah uh, i will i will highly highly recommend to people go on youtube just look up vanguard bandits opening cutscene it's beautiful and i mean that in both like an ironic way and an unironic way <laughs> it's it's very much uh, a thing <laughs> But uh, thank you all so much for, for tuning in and for just uh, letting me share this game with y'all. Uh, again, if you are at all interested in playing this game, it's on the PSN. I think it's only like 10 bucks. 
go check it out. Uh, play it for yourself. Like I said, we only did one route out of three possible routes. There's a lot more to the story here. Um, there's a lot more to the jokes here, uh, which again, 2,000 games. Some some of them are okay still. Some, yeah. Um, but uh, I totally recommend uh, checking it out if you all interested in learning this route. I have notes. I have a giant spreadsheet. I am always happy to uh, share with everyone. Uh, I love getting people into games and just sharing the games I love. And just giant thanks to to GDQ and to Frame Fatales for uh, for inviting me on here, for uh, letting me come raise some money for the Malala Fund. It's been an absolute uh, joy of the time. I was so happy to uh, hang out here with both uh, you, uh, Liz and Garby. You were uh, wonderful companions uh, on this little journey. And I, I can't thank you all enough. Yeah, no problem. It was fun. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for having <laughs> me. Yeah. Very fun. I had never seen this game before and it just looks really good. It's, it's like I said, it's, it's um, amongst different uh, tactical RPGs, it's definitely a little different than some of the other ones. It does have some interesting stuff going on under the hood. But overall, it's it's just a, a fun little game. Yeah. And uh, let me all know uh, when we cut, uh, I'm going to let it go and kick it to the menu music. We'll see if any of that ends up playing on stream. Menu music is actually the secret gem of this game. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's up to y'all. I know y'all got to keep moving on. So, uh, but I'm... Yeah, we're, we're going yep. to go all ahead right. and move on. Thank you so all much right, again, Skyla Kitty. No problem at all. Y'all have a great rest of the marathon. I'll probably be lurking around in chat, uh, supporting my fellow uh, RPG Valkyrie. And uh, y'all just have a great rest of the week. And let's uh, raise that uh, 50K for the Malala Fund. Sounds good. Yeah. Again, thank you so much to Scala Kitty for that incredible run. We went places. We talked about Muppets. We talked about trains. We went on a ride. Well, I've been Lizdar. I'll be heading off soon. But before I do, I want to read a few donations and throw us to an ad. We got... $10 from Mike the Greatest. It's gratis, not greatest, uh, with no message. Thank you so much, friend. And we have $10 from Crazy American that says, Medieval Mecca is underrepresented across all media. And I agree, Medieval Mecca is a very interesting concept. Uh, and we also have $5 from VT Arcellus. You should have been mer... Oh, wait, wrong game. Thank you, everyone, for your donations. If you're looking for, towards something to donate uh, for, our big incentive today is our Oblivion No Out of Bounds bonus game. We are currently uh, about $3,750 away from that. I can math. <laughs> we are, uh, we're, get, we're getting there. That'll be later today, but you know, every little bit counts. Thank you all so much. Uh, we're going to go ahead and throw it to a Twitch ad, and we'll be right back.
we are here at Ross Patel's 2020, and I am here with Fuzia Benchek, who is the Capacity Building Officer for Malala Fund. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be with you all. We're, we're very happy to have you here with us today. So for those who may be tuning in now from home, can you tell us a little bit about Malala Fund and also how you yourself got involved? Yeah, of course. So Malala Fun, our main mission is that we champion every girl's right to 12 years of free, safe, quality education. Um, and we do that because we believe that girls are the best investment in the future peace and prosperity just of the world. But right now, there are more than 130 million girls out of school today. So what we're doing is we're strategically working in regions where girls miss um, where most of the girls miss out on secondary education, which for our American audience, that's like grades um, six through 12. And specifically, we, we focus on secondary education because girls with second edu uh, secondary education become women who are more likely to participate on equal terms in the labor force and lead healthier and more productive lives, be decision makers at home and in their communities. Um, Part of one of the ways that we're uh, doing this work is through the Education um, Champions Network. Um, we're investing in local education advocates, people who best understand girls in their communities, in the regions where okay. girls, yeah, in the regions where girls are fighting to go to school. Um, so this, they're working on breaking down the barriers to girls' education, like poverty, war, um, gender discrimination. Um, and all of those are going to differ like between countries and communities. And the reason why we're investing in local activists is that we believe that local activists and educators are best placed to identify the problems that girls face and develop solutions to challenge those problems. Awesome. Um, yeah. And how I got into the work, I mean, I'm really fortunate to be, have been of service in the area of supporting leaders and activists for the majority of my professional career. Um, I think sometimes we think that activists are like these superhumans who have all of the skills and all of the knowledge and the tools to enact social change. And while a vast majority of them are superhuman, folks still need support through trainings and through the sharing of resources and through the facilitating of peer-to-peer -peer learning to mm -hmm. uh, advance their advocacy and their movement building and their communication skills. And this is what I do at Malala Fund. This is what I help facilitate as my role as capacity building officer. So Amazing. Yeah. Um, so oh, this is ahead. basically like a perfect fit for you then. Yeah, yeah. I love the work that I do. And I think um, part of what is so great and engrossing about the work is that we bring together the activists that we're working in, in uh, that operate in eight different countries together in the same room and often finds that we find um, that we don't necessarily even have to bring external partners, that a lot of them are learning how to be better advocates and leaders from each other. So that what is what makes like the work really, really awesome. That sounds amazing. That, that sounds like amazing work. Thank you so much for all that you do. Can you tell me a little bit about what countries you serve um, with, with your mission? Yeah, so we're working in eight countries right now. So okay. India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Lebanon and Turkey to service um, the Syrian refugee population and Brazil right now in Latin America. That sounds amazing. You, you're basically working in, in a ton of different places then. Yeah. Do you feel that um, in the future you might expand to other countries as well? Yes, that is awesome. definitely what we're planning to do. Um, as we get more focused and targeted with our strategy, we do plan to expand further on. So definitely for, for the folks out there, please keep track of us um, on Malala Fund's Twitter and social media accounts so you can check out and see all of the great work that we're doing and the places in the future where we're going to be expanding our work to. Great. So as you know, this is our uh, Frost Fatales is benefiting Malala Fund. So all for all of you at home, all of the donations will go directly to Malala Fund. Can you tell me a little bit about what the donations from Fro Frost Fatales will do for Malala Fund? Yeah, so Malala Fund operates in very in different ways. Like we do a lot of advocacy work at the international level, bringing our activists, you know, creating these high 
uh, visibility advocacy moments at the G7 or at the UN. And so definitely funds are used to help support that work. Um, I work on the Education Champions Network, the program, and a lot of donations come in, go to support our, um, the support that we give our activists through um, our champions, through like these facilitated learning opportunities. So folks who are donating, a lot of it is to support the work that we're doing in raising the visibility of girls' voices, but also helping to support the activists that we're working in in those eight countries that I mentioned. Thank you so much for all of your hard work in, in helping those women get a voice. Um, so let's let's take it to a little bit more of a, of a casual question. Um, this is a video game event. This is yeah. a speed running event. There's a lot of video games being played. What is your favorite video game? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I would say Final Fantasy VII, but I'm also like, it's a battle for me. It's like Final Fantasy VII, but I love like the Aeons and the Summons in Final Fantasy X. So, so you're, you're, you're a big Final Fantasy fan then, right? I am. Yeah, that's what I spent most of like my teens playing. It's like me as like an angsty teenager, just like <laughs> playing Final Fantasy X. Like, why won't anybody understand me except Titus on like Final Fantasy X? But if you like angsty, then maybe you would want to watch Final Fantasy VIII, which is actually happening happening tonight. That actually stars an in, in, in angsty. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm so, I'm ready. I'm ready for Final Fantasy VIII. I'm looking at it and I think it's being played under like three or, or two hours. So shout out to the gamers who are doing this. You you are legends, you are icons. <laughs> Thank you for your work. All right, so for, um, for Frame Fatales, this is a speed running event, which is, it could be in terms from, compared to a casual playthrough of a video game, speed running can be seen as, a, as quite different. Um, how do you, what are your thoughts on speed running and, and from viewing what you've seen so far of Frost Fatales, how, did, how does speed running look to you? Yeah, I mean, it is incredible skill and technique that, that I'm like looking at the, the agenda and just ha again, like Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time being played under two hours. I feel I never got past that game. And so like, it just really makes me like, it underscores just how really talented the folks are that are playing these games. But also I'm looking at specifically this event and how it was curated and sort of these games that are, you know, bring back like nostalgia and all of these like wonderful good feelings of like what it was like to play, you know, Donkey Kong and um, Mario, Super Mario, like it's, it's really special, I think, and um, I'm I'm so excited to actually jump in. I'm definitely watching um, the speed run of Final Fantasy VIII, and I'm definitely checking out the uh, Legend of <laughs> Ocarina of Time on Saturday. Perfect. All right. I also recommend Super Mario RPG because if you okay. like Mario games and you like and you seem to be an RPG fan because you like Final Fantasy, I definitely recommend watching Super Mario RPG. I think if you watch it, you'll probably want to pick it up and and play it. Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely recommend that one. All right, so thank you so much for all of your time, Fuzia. Thank you so much for educating us on, on Malala Fund and telling us about more about what you do because really, um, pers me personally speaking, you know, to see that there are people advocating for us women is, is powerful and it's very meaningful. So thank you so much for all of your hard work and thank you very much to the organization. We really appreciate it. And we hope that, um, we can we can make this a really great week. Yeah, I mean, thank you all for helping to support us. Thank you to the folks, to the audience, to the folks who are donating. Obviously, like any donation, I feel like makes you a part of this larger mission that we're doing to really advance girls' education and girls' empowerment around the world. So really, really appreciate everything. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, everybody, so we are going to go to a quick break, and then we will get going on Yoyo Kengeki Muso. Thank you very much. Thank you.
a few of our outstanding donations. Thanks again to all of our very generous donators. Uh, we would not have had this level of success without all of you. So uh, let's get started. We have uh, $15 from Danstead saying, greetings all. It's nice to see how much we've raised for Malala Fund so far. I'll try this bid war thing again by suggesting that Renoa from Final Fantasy VIII is named Dance Mom in game as D-A-N-C M-O-M, after one of the Lady GDQ mods. Keep kicking butt, ladies, and keep on grooving all. I think we can all definitely get behind the dancing. Let's see, we have $25 from Smelly Feet saying, keep up the good work. Thank you again for that. We have uh, $5 from Anonymous. Very appreciated. Every little bit that anyone can give really does help uh, the Malala Fund and even helps go towards the different donation incentives that we are trying to complete, many of which we do still have ongoing. But let's get a few more of these donations read, and then we'll uh, talk about some of our, our incentives. Okay, so we also have $25 from Ameli San saying, trans rights, agreed. We have $25 from JLT. Thanks for keeping me company while I've been homesick these past few days. Here's some money for the Oblivion incentive. Thank you so much for that. And for those who aren't, uh, aren't aware, the Oblivion incentive is our first bonus game. So we are looking to get uh, that met so we can have that game added into the schedule. Right now we're at 1307 uh, out of a needed $5,000. So let's see if we can keep those donations coming. Um, for anyone who hasn't seen any of those uh, Elder Scrolls speedruns, they tend to be pretty excellent so definitely not going to want to miss that we have uh 30 dollars from uh misrimoto 74 thank you so so much for that uh very appreciated and then we have $10 from GFM saying, Rhythm, good luck on your uh, Yo-Yo Kengeki Muso run. Thank you so much. That is actually the run, which is coming up shortly. And uh, definitely want to see that. We're currently getting all set up. And it should be a really excellent time. Let's see if we have some other upcoming donation incentives that we can talk about. We have uh, a donation incentive for Else Heart Break, which is coming after this run. That is going to be to show off the Easter egg where you boot up Else Heart Break properly, whatever that means. $30 out of a needed 500 And with that, we are ready to go for our next run. Yo-Yo Ken.